There we go. We are recording. We are live. Um, and my phone just started, but my watch just started buzzing, reminding me to <laughs> to start recording. Good morning, afternoon, evening, and all those other things um, to people around the country, the North America, the continent, and the European continent. We don't have anybody from Asia or Australia yet this morning. Um, Dan won't be here today, so so I may have to go and let people in here and there now and then. Um, a word or two of um, whoops, there's Helen. Maybe if I keep the pointer up there. And John, a word or two of, what is that going to, I can't I think can of the word. Introduce. Um, uh, the paperwork, whatever the standard thing is before that. Um, I want to let people know that next week we will not be having a session because it's the National Square Dance Convention. Um, not that I'm going, but we're not going to have a session anyway. And the week after that is a holiday in the United States, 4th of July weekend. So we will not be having a session in two weeks. But in three weeks, um, if we all remember how to do this, we will be back. Uh, in fact, I've got about five weeks all lined up after that with some very interesting speakers. Um, so... Don't lose track of what we're doing here and invite others. Um, I know, Hal, you were going to try and invite some others. I hope you've got some people to in your area that want to join us eventually. Anyway, without wasting any more of our speaker's time, um, today we have a gentleman that started calling as a teenager. And shortly after that, in 1965, he's been, he started calling. He's from Colorado originally, lives in Colorado now, but has lived several places and called in them over the years, including 20 years in the, was it right in Washington or just in the Washington area, Hal? The Washington, all around the Washington area, actually. Okay. And uh, he's uh, very much into Western square dancing, including um, SSD. He's also pretty active in English country dancing, which I tried and wasn't quite my thing, but I know a lot of people love that also. Um, and he may want to tell you more about himself. Hal's presentation is going to be a little bit longer than, than usual, but I, I believe he's going to accept, stop and, you know, ask questions along the way. But Hal's going to tell you more about it. So without any further ado, talking about asymmetric choreography, asymmetrics, um, let's have a big hand for Hal Barnes. Take it away. Uh, thank Hal. you. I uh, first like to thank uh, Larry Marquis for um, uh, arranging this. I didn't know about this forum and, and Larry was the one that kind of gave me the sales pitch that said, that uh, I could be a movie star if I if I did this, so I, I accepted accepted that. Um, I uh, I'm in the Southern Colorado mountains, and um, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but us uh, mountain people are are very proud of our our elevations. So, uh, for example, my son-in-law, as we speak this morning, is running on the Leadville Marathon. The entire route is between 10,000 and 13,000 feet for the, for the marathon. Um, we have a club called the Ridge Runners, uh, north of me about 70 miles, and they are at 9,500 feet. Uh, and uh, Larry calls for them and I call for them some. They advertise themselves as the highest level club in the, in the country. Um, and uh, you might think because of their elevation, they would kind of short and their dance up a little bit. That's not true. Their dance is three hours long. So there's some there's some tough folks uh, up here in the in the mountains. 
Um, let me, uh, I'm gonna share my uh, slide thing with you now. Okay, can people see the see the slide? Yes, definitely. Okay, we're good then. All right. Um, so what why are we even talking about this? What's the benefit? Well, we're all of us are looking for something that gives us additional variety, especially with very low effort by the collars. Um Asymmetric choreography is a very big topic. And so I'm focusing on one little piece of that that I think has the biggest bang for the buck, which is same sex mini squares. And because I can, I can handle it, it's, uh, it's dramatic for the dancers and it's almost no effort for the callers. Uh, what a same sex mini square is, is for example, a wave of four boys and another wave of four girls and you, you dance them in their own same-sex uh, waves. And like I said, this is very uh, dramatic for dancers who don't get to see that setup very often. So um, our objective is to, when, by the time I'm done, callers will be able to easily get the dancers into same-sex formations, call extemporaneously, and resolve with existing site calling skills. So that's what we're about today. Um, the principal audience is those who use site resolution, although you can use these techniques for designing interesting modules and for uh, full call sequences, but it's focused kind of on the site resolution. I recommend this for plus and above, um, not mainstream and below on a rare occasion. I will do this very slowly with some good mainstream floors, but I'll have to say um, plus and above, this is really a great technique. Also, it's to be used sparingly, okay? A little of this goes a long way. So for example, in an entire plus dance, I might use two sequences through the whole evening, maybe three that are asymmetric. So. Again, this is not gonna be your bread and butter, okay? This is for some additional variety. And once again, a little of it goes a long ways. <laughs> um, what this is not, this is not unconstrained asymmetric calling. In 2012, I was on a, a panel with Randy Doherty on asymmetric calling. And we kind of took really different angles at the at this thing randy was all about unconstrained asymmetric calling to do that you have to be able to follow three couples for resolution if you can do that you don't need this class okay um i'm for uh so also at the other end we have callers who will memorize a few asymmetric figures and sort of have them in their toolbox to do that that's not what this is this is um, this is uh, symmetric calling that is extemporaneous, so it's not that. This is not gimmicks. Many people consider asymmetrics to be gimmicks, and they consider that because they don't flow well within our normal calling, and I'm trying to rebrand asymmetrics to be a part of normal calling, not just gimmicks. So I go out of my way to try to fit it in and make it look like our regular calling. This is certainly not all to know, there is to know about asymmetrics. Uh, that's a huge topic. And this is a very small sample. Back in 2012, I'd been working on asymmetrics for a long time. I just wrote down everything I knew at that point in time, mostly for my benefit, so I wouldn't forget it. That's in a paper that's available on my website. Everything we're doing today is out of chapter one, okay? So just to give you a sense, this is a very limited peak. In this amount of time, that's about all I can do. I will stop after each slide and ask for questions as we get into the content, okay? So we'll ask questions as we go. Okay, here's the agenda. There's a little bit of concepts and language we need to get behind us in order to dis even discuss the asymmetric choreo. 
then we'll go into the basic procedure. And this is give you a roadmap to how we get around the, this whole process. We'll go, we'll go step by step through, through each one. And then we'll add a little variety on some of the modules that we use. That's kind of the end of the basic procedure. Hopefully that'll take about half the time, a little more. Then we go into advanced topics for same-sex mini squares, which will allow us to expand the geography and to expand also into asymmetric formations, which is something that we won't do in the basic procedure. Then we'll be done with the video presentation. And, um, but I wanna provide an ability for after class interactive practice for anybody who actually wants to try it. I have my little checkers and we can, we can work through some, but that'll be after the recording is over. So that's our agenda. Any, any questions at this point? Okay. So the first important concept is the image dancer. It's critical for uh, asymmetric work. So on the left uh, over here is normal setup and image dancers are the ones that are diagonally across the square from you. So for example, the head men are image dancers. The side ladies are image dancers of each other. That's the way it works in the symmetric region. Always boys, boys, and girls, girls. So on the right are the asymmetric image dancers. And we get to the asymmetric region by having two adjacent couples do a half sachet. Notice couples one and two are half sacheted. And then we just continue calling this way. So that's, we are then in the asymmetric region. Notice in that region that no longer boys and boys aren't image dancers with each other. Now, in every case, boys and girls are image dancers. Notice the one, number one man and the number three, uh, the number three lady are image dancers. Okay. So if we're ever having somebody throws a setup at you and says, is this asymmetric or not? There's an easy check. Who are image dancers? If it's same sex, it'll be symmetric. If it's the opposite sex, it'll be asymmetric. Okay. Let's just go through this quick. I think most of you, I get the impression are fairly experienced callers, but we need to know the language. So this is Caller Lab Standard, FASR. So any symmetric setup can be described with four properties. The formation, which is like lines, waves, and columns. The arrangement, which is the placement of boys and girls in the formation, like boy, boy, girl, girl, and so on. The sequence, and uh, in symmetric dancing, we can, the boys and girls separately are said to be in sequence, one, two, three, four, or out of sequence, one, four, three, two. So since it's specified separately for boys and girls, there are four possible sequence arrangements in the symmetric world and the relationship. Who are partners? For example, I'll have the original partners, to have the right hand lady, to have the corners. So for example, when we say, well, my setup is normal partner lines in sequence, we're hitting all four of those. Normal is the arrangement, partner is the relationship, lines is the formation, and then we're saying in sequence, that's the sequence, okay? In this work on same sex, on the asymmetric stuff, we are mostly interested in arrangement asymmetry, okay? And so in a normal symmetric dancing, you know, what's, what's the most boys you can have in a line? It's two. <laughs> in asymmetric dancing, we can have three, we can have four. All right, so we can go three boys and a girl in a line, we can have all boys in a line. So on. So we are unlocking the arrangement, and that's going to be our focus for this presentation. Okay, here is our, let me get a drink here. Here is our roadmap to doing the basic procedure. We start in a static square, and there are some um, bridge, bridge modules that move us to the asymmetric region. They're short, but there's something you're gonna to have to know. And the purpose of the bridge module affects two adjacent couples doing a half sachet. I pointed that out before when we talked about the image dancers. Then as soon as we get into the asymmetric region, then we navigate to same sex mini squares because that's where we're gonna work from in this, in this technique. 
We then do extemporaneous formation management. We just, we do whatever we want to within some constraints for them. And then it's time to get back to the symmetric region. So we, if we need to, we return to a symmetric formation. We put the ladies in a left-handed formation and we normalize by have, then we normalize back to the symmetric region by having infacers pass through. We're then back over into the symmetric region and you finish, you resolve with your normal site calling like you normally do. So the whole point here is we've taken a loop into the asymmetric region. We've set up same sex mini squares. We've danced extemporaneously through them. And then we have a technique for getting back to the symmetric side in, in everything kosher. And then you finish up as normal. So the point here is you get to have this asymmetric work without any additional work as a caller in terms of who you're following or tracking. It's free, okay? Any questions at this point? Okay. So we'll go through step by step each of those steps. So the on this one, I'm giving you the first bridge bridge module here. And so the bridge module is side star through and spread, pass through wheel and deal. Those with their backs to the collar do a zoom. Okay, that puts us in the setup I've shown here and note. Who are the image dancers? Well, the number one man and the number two lady are image dancers. Okay, the number four man, uh, okay, the, and uh, number two man image dancer with the number three lady. So everybody's got opposite sex as image dancers. We know we're in the asymmetric world. Step two, move to same sex mini squares. So what we do is the centers pass through. So we have same sex mini squares. Here's four boys on the top, the four girls are on the bottom. Okay. So that's steps one and two. Really simple. Any questions at this point? Okay. Step three, extemporaneous calling. Now we have some constraints. And let me talk about the constraints. They're not bad constraints. One thing I would suggest keep it short when you're in the asymmetric world. The longer you stay, the bigger the risk. People like it and think it's cool if you get in and out. If you get in and stay there, it gets tiring, okay? So these constraints apply only to step three, extemporaneously calling. Here are the rules. There's only two rules. You can't use any call that has gender built into the definition. So you can't call a slide through, okay? Number two, you have to call as if you're calling to a single standalone mini square. Let me think about that for a minute. So even though you're looking at the floor and you have four boys in a wave here, four girls in a wave here, the restriction on your calling is as if you only have one mini square, not the whole square, just four people dancing. So let me give you the implications of that. For example, let me say they all veer left, they're in a two-face line. Now I can tag the line. I can say tag the line face right, face left, but can I tag the line and say face in? If I only have one mini square, there is no other, there is no square. They're in and out are not defined because you use the other half to tell you which is in and which is out because it's when you say face in or face out, you're saying face in toward the middle of the square or face out away from the middle of the square. But if you have no square, they're undefined. So that's one of the implications. You can say tag the line and face in, okay? So there's some others. A good way to get used to this is just get your checkers out and get four boys or four girls as just the two couples and call everything you can think of to them. That's exactly what you can call in this setup. It takes a little discipline because in front of you, you in fact are seeing a square, but you can't call as if there were a whole square. You're calling just to the mini square. Finally, at the end of your, of your extemporaneous calling, leave them in a handed formation. 
Okay, handed formations are waves, two-faced lines and columns. Boxes and lines are not handed formations. So let me review again. We're gonna not call slide through. We're gonna call as if we're calling to a single mini square and we leave them in a handed formation. Any questions? We're gonna, I'll continue talking about this just a bit, but at this point, are there any questions? Okay. Why do we have the constraints? Here's why. In the symmetric region, boys and girls have two possible sequences, in or out, and they could be specified separately. So we have four possible combinations. When we cross to the asymmetric region, it unlocks the sequence. So the four boys have six possible sequences they can be in. The girls have six possible sequences. Together, there are 36 possible sequence combinations. Four of these are good and 32 are bad, okay? So if you violate, if you violate one of the constraint, you will get, you will almost certainly end up in one of those 32 bad sequences. The story gets worse. When you normalize and go back to the symmetric region, it relocks the sequence. Whatever sequence you're in, that gets locked. So if you're in a bad sequence, and you go back to the symmetric region, you are locked in that sequence and you cannot fix it in the symmetric region. So the constraints guarantee that when you go back to the symmetric region, you're gonna lock in a good sequence. You're gonna keep one of those four and not the 32. That's why we have the constraints. Any questions? Okay. Oh, here's a constraints pop quiz, okay? For brevity, I'll give you the answers, but I want you to think about them. So I've got in the upper left, I've got two facing couples. Can I slide through? Can't slide through because the gender is built into the definition. We can't use any call where gender is built into the definition. Here's a two-faced line. Can I tag the line and face in or out? No, because we're dealing with just a single mini square in and out are undefined. Here is a box. Can I have out facers run? Yes, because out is defined within the box in the mini square. I'm not referring to anything outside the box. Out facers are good, so out facers can run. In the lower left, face here, can I pass through and bend the line? Well, I cannot because there's no other half of the square. And when you pass through, you just have two outfacing couples. There's no line to bend. But in here, here's a two-face line. Can I bend the line? Yes, because the line, because uh, the centers are defined within the context of the box you have. Can I circle? Here's the thing. Can I circle to a line? That's a little more interesting. Who breaks? When we, when we circle half, who breaks? It's those on the outside of the square. Uh-oh, we don't have a square. I can't circle to a line. So this just gives you, but having focused on the things I can't do, there is a million things you can do with all this um, Zoom dancing we're doing during the pandemic. I mean, we did lots and lots of two-couple dancing, and we demonstrated how vibrant that can be. So even though I'm in really talking about the constraints, the constraints aren't a big deal. There's a ton of stuff you can do, okay? So any questions at this point? Okay, moving on. Step five. We're ready to, we're ready to go back to the symmetric region now. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we're ready to go back to our symmetric region. So, did I, did I miss one? Just a second, let me go back to my previous. Oh, huh. okay. <sighs> okay, so to normalize, first of all, remember I would leave them in a handed formation. So in the left side here, I want to get the ladies in a left-handed setup. So this is not terribly subtle, but I just say ladies trade the wave. So men are still in their right-handed wave. Ladies in their, are now in a left-handed wave, okay? 
That's a way to do it. It's not a great way to do it. We'll talk more about that later. Then to normalize the square, I say those who are facing pass through. And then you get this thing here. Let's go back and look at the, let's go back and look at our image dancers to verify that we're there. Notice that the number three man and number one man are image dancers. Okay, number four lady, uh, number four lady, number two lady are image dancers. That tells us we are back into a symmetric square. Okay, so we're back. And at this point, we would resolve however you normally, you know, like you would normally resolve uh, in your site calling. So, and it's just to finish it, step seven, resolve to finish. So I said, wheel and deal, that gives you this setup here. Um, men zoom and the centers pass through, Alaman left, okay? So we've gone through the whole cycle. So the benefit is it's free to callers. It's free in the sense that I don't have to cite on anybody else. I don't have to track anybody else. This gives a big bang to the dancers because they're not used to being in same-sex waves. So it's a variety benefit with no cost, very little cost, okay? Also, in terms of difficulty, you know, I recommended this at plus and above. It's a little, you can, as the caller, you can make this easy. Um, you know, we got same sexes dancing together, but if you got a light floor, you can make it easy or you can make it incredibly hard. That's why this is very cool stuff for doing DVD and the higher levels is because, um, you know, uh, they're just not used to doing that all that much. Okay. So let me recap the figure that we just went through. So to begin with, I had the bridge module to the asymmetric region. Side so start through and spread, pass through, we and deal, those with their back to the collar do a zoom. Now we're in the asymmetric region. We did the centers pass through, that got us in the same sex mini squares. I had a short extemporaneous section. I don't remember if that slide was in there, but my extemporaneous thing was touch it, first split, circulate once and a half to a diamond, flip the diamond. Okay, so I did uh, three, three calls um, is my extemporaneous section. And I wanted to get out. So I left them in handed formation. I did ladies trade the wave, which put them in a left-handed formation. Those facing pass through, which was my normalizing. And then I resolved with normal site resolution, wheel and deal, men, zoom, centers pass through, Alaman left. So that's how, that's how it works. You can see each of the steps that we went, we went through here to loop into the symmetric region, do our, do our extemporaneous stuff and come back out again. Okay, any questions at this point? Yeah, question. Okay. Okay, um, can you have them, why, why would you have just the ladies uh, go into the left-hand formation? That's, that's part of the, I only can answer is, is that's part of the, the procedure for getting back to, that's part of the procedure for getting back to the symmetric region. As soon as I do that, put the ladies in the left-handed formation, then I have boys and girls facing each other across the set, and then I have them pass through, and that's what gets me back to the symmetric region. So except as part of the technique of getting back that's that you put the ladies in a left-handed setup and then have those facing in do a, a pass through. So as an extension on, on Joe's comment, what if you had the men in a left-hand wave, would it still yeah, work? That's a very good question. You can put either in a left-handed wave. Uh, it doesn't matter, either the boys or the girls. The reason I do the girl, the reason I do the girls is this. When I have the girls go to the left-handed wave and I have those facing do a pass through, then I have normal outfacing couples. If I had the boys go to a left-handed wave and those facing in pass through, then I'd have half sashayed outfacing couples. And just because with the people I'm dealing with, I want to get them back to something that feels really comfortable really quick. So I, I always use the girls into the left-handed wave because it ends up with normal 
I get back to a normal result more quickly. But in terms of the technique, you can do either. It doesn't matter. So a, a quick, if you did the boys, a quick tag the line face in would get them in normal couples and not be too bad. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. So tell me that again. If, if you hadn't, if you had the boys in a left handed wave, oh, okay. did facing couples and you would end up with half sashayed, a quick way to get them back to normal couples and not half sashayed is just to attack from your facing line out, yeah. tag the line and face in. After you normalize, yes, you're right, Don. After you normalize, you would be in out facing half sashayed lines. And Don's just pointing out, okay, so everybody tagged the line and face in, and now you're back to normal line. So, which that was a very good question, and it's up to you. Put one of the one of the two sides has to be in a left-handed for, formation. Okay. Now, but John John <coughs> had his hand up for a second. Sure, go ahead. That was the same question. Was basically whether we could do it men or women. So that's fine. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Either one. Your your choice. Okay. Let me. Um, so we want a variety of ways to get in, and a variety of ways to get out, so that it does. Because we, so we don't. We're not just signaling. I only know one way. So I'm listed here some different bridge bridge modules to take you into the symmetric region. Remember, any bridge module, what it affects is two adjacent couples doing a half sachet. So we did the first one already. The second one is one that dancers really like this one. Uh, sides lead right, circle to a line, pass through, tag the line and face the collar. Everybody bend the line. And if you think about it, as soon as they face the collar, one line is now half sashayed and one line is normal. So that's how we pulled off the adjacent couples half sashay. And then we bend the line. Now to get, now we quickly want to get to same-sex mini squares. And one way to do it is, a quick way to do it is to say the um, centers pass through and the centers run. Uh, centers pass through, centers run, bend the line. Now notice that in the first bridge module we used ended up in, in boxes, same-sex boxes. When we do this particular one, we end up in lines. That is, we have the, you know, the men are all, they're all facing each. If we look at the whole square, it looks like boys and girls are in lines, but in each box, you know, you still have same-sex boxes, but, uh, you know, I'm sorry, same-sex mini squares, but they're in lines rather than boxes. So it can go either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, a third one, oh, the, re, the, call, the dancers really seem to like that. <laughs> they like the but the pass through tagline face to color. Notice, guys, I have sides lead right and circle to a line. Pass through tagline face to color. If you do heads lead right and circle to a line, pass through suddenly um, tagline face to color doesn't work because the lines are oriented wrong. And if you uh, so you got to be aware that it's in fact sides lead right circle wrong. Or if to do the heads, you got to have them pass through bend the line. In other words, you got to get the lines oriented across the heads in order to make that work. So the third one is heads slide through and the near column do a double pass through. Okay. And that will make all the same sexes connected with each other. And very quickly, we do same sexes trade and roll. Okay. Then you have, you're already there in same sex line of uh, you know boxes in a line formation or here's another one um head star through and spread so we have facing lines same set you know uh, boy boy girl girl lines and the couple uh the near couple or the couple nearest the collar pass through everybody wheel and deal that will give us same-sex boxes. So those are four ways, four bridge modules to get you in there. And that way you don't have to use the same one all the time um, and uh, make it obvious. So there are others, but you know, four, four with two of them being lines, two boxes gives you a good repertory of things. Yes, Clark? You started the whole talk with an example of couples one and two, a half sachet. Can you give us one from there that gets us in? Um, 
you could, that's a good question, uh, Clark. I, um, I don't, when I'm doing same sex boxes, I don't use that because it takes longer to get into a same sex mini squares. Um, okay. You could, you could in fact do couples one and two half sachet and you can start calling from there, but it takes a little longer. Uh, it, let me see. I think it takes a little longer to get there. Uh, maybe there is a really good one, but I, that's just not one that I use, but absolutely you can, you can do one and two half sachet head square through four and then, you know, and just navigate them into same sex mini squares. These modules aren't magic. The, the magic part is getting into the symmetric asymmetric region, getting in same squares, sex, sex squares, or I'm sorry, same sex mini squares. That's up to you. Do it any way you'd like. Okay. Good point though, Clark. Okay. Now let's go to the other end, the normalizing modules. We, on the one example we gave, we had waves. We put the ladies in a left-hand wave and we had those facing pass through. Okay. This is really cool stuff. So we, we already did that. That's the first one here, two parallel waves. So what if we have two parallel two-face lines? So for example, we get in a, a two-face line on either sides. One's all boys, one's all girls. We do tag the line, ladies face left and the men face right. And as you can tell, that will give us one end of the line will have boys and girls facing. The other end of the line will have girls, boys and girls back to back. So once again, to normalize, we go, those who are facing in pass through. Okay, you see what I'm saying now? Um, so that's, uh, so we can do it from two-faced lines. Doesn't have to be waves. So here's another one that is, this is really nice, okay? So let's say we have, um, if it look, if you look at the big square, it looks like you have, you know, lines of four, but in fact you have, Right on one side, boys are facing each other. The other side, girls are facing each other, right? You know where I'm talking about? From there, slide through. That is super because at this point, ladies are in a left-handed column. The men are in a right-handed column. And we didn't even have to call out the girls or the boys to do something special, okay? This is my whole theme about try to avoid making this like a gimmick. And if we just call slide through, that's totally cool because I didn't have to call out either the boys or the girls. So now we got one column is facing in, the other column is back to back, the column facing in, same rule. Those facing in do a double pass through all the way through or back to a normalized square and we're in a completed double pass through setup, okay? And finally, another one, which is a column related. Let's say we all have right-handed, uh, we all are in a right-handed uh, column, so boys, would have a right-handed box and the girls would have a right-handed box. So one example here, everybody trade and the ladies do a U-turn back or everybody trade and the ladies roll twice. And now we've moved the ladies into a left-handed column and same deal, those facing in do a double pass through. So once again, to give you variety, <coughs> the one you think of most often is waves, right-handed and left-hand, those facing in pass through. But in fact, it could be two-faced lines, it could be columns, Back to my comment, anything that's handed can work. Any questions? Clark. Do you want to say anything, your example number three, um, while you're using it to normalize, um, violates your don't use slide through or sex calls um, while we're doing our extemporaneous calling? Well, if I hope if, if anybody's eavesdropping on us, Clark's talking about sex calls. I mean, this is going to get a lot of attention. Um, okay, good point, Clark. When I talked about my constraint, I made a big deal of saying this constraint applies to your extemporaneous part of this procedure. When you're ready to do normalizing, go back to symmetric the constraints aren't there anymore. In fact, exactly the calls that were not allowed during our extemporaneous stuff are exactly the calls we use in order to get back. And thank you for pointing that out, Clark. So yeah, those rules have to do with your extemporaneous calling. When you're done moving on to let's get back, now you have open to you slide through and, and other 
whatever you know it takes to get the, the setup done. So another way, oh yes, I'm sorry, uh, Hannah, go ahead. Yeah. I just wonder if you have those two boxes of the same sex dancers, do you have to call the same calls to both of them or could you call something for the girls and something something different for the boys? Wow, you're just you're just a, a wonderful lead in to the next section. Okay. Uh, let me put that off for about five minutes and I will come right I will come back to your question. Um, one more point here is when you're trying to um, get the one side or the other into a left-handed formation. Again, we want to do this as subtly and smoothly as we can. So for example, one thing that I like to do is, for example, do uh, same sexes in boxes, touch a quarter, follow your neighbor, and only the men spread. And you see, that's very, that's very smooth, very subtle. And now we have the ladies on the left hand side, the men on the, the right hand uh, right hand side. So I, I try to sneak in that um, change to the left handed uh, as, as smoothly as, as I can. OK, so. Um, uh, so let's if that's the basic procedure and we we're doing good on time. So now let's go into some advanced topics. The first one is expanding the geography. And you'll notice that when we did, once we set up these same sex mini squares, we were pretty much locked in place and we just worked with each square where, you know, each mini square where they were. We're gonna relax that constraint a little bit, okay? We're gonna move them around. Also, we're gonna to get to disconnected mini squares, which was the basic of Hannah's question. And which means we're not required to use the same calls for each mini square, which leads to asymmetric formation. So let's get into this. First, expanding the geography. So the first thing we can do is we can move the boys and girls through each other without interacting with each other, okay? So here's an example. There's our starting setup over on the left. Uh, okay, we have this two face line. So I can do a, I can do a couple circulate, bend the line, pass through wheel and deal and the centers wheel around. And I end up with same sex mini squares, just like here. And this is a big deal to the dancers because I've rotated the square by 90 degrees. Everything looks different. And yet what, what I had them do is the dancers were actually just passing through each other. You know, boys and girls never touched each other. They never interacted with each other, but we geographically moved the mini square someplace else. So this is a way to give you some variety without, you know, violating any of the, any of the rules, okay? So another example, surprisingly, of one that does that is load the boat. Think about it, if I had, I could, uh, if I had the squares that it looked like lines, same sex mini squares, and I said load the boat, what we're doing is taking the, each mini square is swapping sides and boys pass through girls and nobody ever touches, touches each other. So load the boat kind of falls into this category of having dancers move through each other without touching. So you, they don't interact with each other, you can't violate any rules. Okay, so let's move on. Here is where we actually have interaction, but there's not a foul. Okay, so this gets interesting. So think about this. So what if I had two parallel waves, you know, one a boy's wave, one's a girl's wave. So one call, what if I do a scoot back from there? Well, boys and girls are interacting with each other, but a scoot back is, you know, equivalent to just turn right hand half. So we can actually have a little interaction between boys and girls, but we're not, we're not, there's no foul. We're not violating a rule, okay? That's if you're in columns, that's also true of triple scoot, okay? Also, relay the deucey is one where, you know, everybody moves to the other side, everybody's interacting with each other, but in the end, it's a zero. You ended up with the same people you started with, okay? Clearly having a boy's wave and a girl's wave and doing relay the deucey. See, now we're into kind of DVD material, but uh, it's, it's just an example of where we get interaction, 
that with, with no foul. Okay. Another one that I'll just tell you about a little module spin chain through and the ends circulate once. So, you know, uh, the, everybody's hanging on to the same person they started with. So centers run and the couples circulate, put you back in same sex, two face lines, no foul. So you did some interaction there. Also <coughs> another module spin chain and exchange the gears and AC Ducey. That'll put you back uh, without a foul. Here's a warning. You're tempted to think, oh, I can do any interaction I want to and then bring the same sexes back together. Not true. Not all modules that return to the same sexes satisfy the constraint. You have to check them out. For example, spin chain the gears does not work. Spin chain the gears is a technical zero and in general, technical zeros will not work, okay? So if you want to test out a particular module, the way you do it is by do the module, get them back to the same sex, go ahead and normalize and check to see if you've got a good, a good, uh, a good sequence. If you do, your module is fine. If you don't, it wasn't. Um, there is an easier explanation as to why some work and some don't, but I don't have time to cover it here. Read the paper if you want to, if you want to know about that. Okay. Moving on. Okay, here's something that's very cool. We don't have to call the same material to the boys and the girls. So you can call different things to each mini square. And one of the things that allows us to do is to set up an asymmetric formation. So over on the left, here's my call. I said, um, okay, here's my module. Head slide through near column, double pass through. Same sex as trade and roll. So now I'm in, um, so I'm in same sex uh, lines past the ocean. So I would have parallel waves. Men swing through and the ladies spin the top. And this is where I end up. Okay. Okay. At this point, you would have to stop calling for a minute because the dancers' heads are all swiveling like bobbleheads because they all think they did something wrong because they've never seen this setup before. So they're all looking around to see if somebody else looks like them. So you have to reassure them at this point that you're just fine, everybody be cool. So then you can, for here, continue to work on, you know, within each same sex wave. So for example, I can do a centers run, half tag, walk and dodge. And as you can see here, they're still, you know, totally asymmetric. So we're ready to get back. So the first rule that I said on my roadmap was if you're not in a symmetric um, uh, formation, you need to get there. So the first thing you need to deal with is how do I get this set up here back into a symmetric formation? So, okay, and there's, there's some, nice ways of doing that. But so for example, on here, my answer is to say partner trade and only the ladies roll. And now I'm back into a symmetric formation. I'm back into lines. Okay. So then um, a real nice get out that I like for the set up the left-handed is to do the slide through. So now ladies have a left-handed column, men have a right-handed column. We went through this before. Uh, then those facing do a double pass through and everybody's facing out. So then uh, you from here, we're back in the symmetric world and you would normal resolve as you normally would. I put, okay, here's how leads partner trade square through four wheel and deal the center slide through at home. So let me review this once again, that we, um, uh, let me recap this figure. So what we did, including the asymmetric formations. So the head slide through, the near column double pass through, same sex trade and roll. That's our bridge module into the asymmetric region. Past the ocean, the men swing through and the ladies spin the top. That set up our asymmetric formation. Now we're doing extemporaneous calling. Centers run, half tag, walk and dodge. Now we wanna get back to a symmetric formation. So I did a partner trade and just the ladies roll. We're back in lines. We want to set up one left-handed side. So we do a slide through, which puts the ladies in left-handed columns. Those facing double pass through. We're now normalized back to symmetric. 
Leads partner trade square through four wheel and deal the center slide through at home regular site resolution. So that's our figure recap, how we went into the symmetric region. We went to asymmetric formation, got back to regular formation, got back to symmetric world. And once again, no cost to the caller. Questions? Okay. So let me emphasize the usage guidelines again. A little bit of this goes a long ways, okay? Um, they're simple to call, to give variety to the dancers. In a whole evening of dancing, you know, two or three figures is, is plenty. Get in quickly and get out quickly. It's tempting once you get to the, you know, asymmetric region to start your formation management and go 10 or 12 calls. Um, but um, remember, you still have to give yourself time to get back to the symmetric region. And once you get there, you have to resolve there. So that makes your calls pretty long. And also, the longer you stay, it's risky. The longer you stay, the more risk you have of things falling apart. So, so be frugal about this. OK, resources. Um, this slide set I put on my website. My website's halbarns.com. That's easy enough to remember. Um, and um, there's a caller corner and I, the, the, these slides are available there. And the original paper that I wrote back in 2012 is there. It's, let me admit what I did, I wrote down everything I knew at the time, mostly so I wouldn't forget it. It's, I worked hard on the paper at the time I did it. And um, it's, it's probably not easy reading some, some of it, but, Certainly everything we talked about here is available in chapter one. So that's, that's a, a good thing. Some, um, um, let me give you a teaser on one other thing. So let's, uh, let's say, for example, this one where we had the head slide through and, uh, and then the nearest column do a double pass through. If you think about that, so the men have a right hand connected, the ladies have a left handed connected at that point. That is a mirror formation where each half of the square, one half is right-handed, one half is left-handed. You can maintain that mirror formation. For example, single hinge fan the top, you have a right wave, a left wave. You can continue calling a whole sequence where half of your square is right-handed and half your square is left-handed. So that's choreography in mirror formations. And then you can come back to your normal symmetric stuff again. That's another chapter in the book. So that's just kind of a tea or in the, in the paper. That's just a little teaser. Um, there, uh, there's, whenever I get to a place where I'm thinking about something and don't want to lose it, I kind of write it down and I throw them out there on my website. So there's a bunch of stuff there. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, send me a note. There's my email address. So, uh, so uh, in terms of the whole thing any any comments questions we did well on time that's great um well yeah let's let's talk for questions for a minute or two and then i will make some general comments you want to unshare your screen so we can see all our <laughs> shining shining <laughs> smiling faces okay Well, I, first of all, I noticed that a, several people were just able to join us at the end. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you go back and watch the video when Dan gets it up because um, Hal builds this very nicely and uh, shows the theory behind it. it. It was really great. I guess we're almost at the hour, so let me do the usual things that, the, that we do. But thank you guys for coming. Um, a quick reminder that we will not be meeting next weekend because of the National Square Dance Convention, and we won't be meeting the weekend after that because of the U.S. three-day holiday weekend, Fourth of July weekend. Um, I guess it'll be Fourth of July weekend everywhere, but it's just not a holiday elsewhere. Uh, and uh, then we have several good programs up for um set up for the following bunch of weekends um i would like 
to personally say that this was fascinating how um, and really well presented in, in, in a, a logical order and a way that everybody can use. And let's have a big help, big hand for Hal, Hal Barnes for doing this. And as I frequently say, if you've only designated an hour, um, feel free to leave without feeling you're insulting somebody. If you joined us lately, you have to say for an hour before you have to leave. No, uh, <laughs> before you're allowed to leave. Uh, why don't we do a few um, just general questions and answers, and then Hal is willing to let some of you guys um, try some sequences with his dolls. Um, Taminations and, and other things just aren't allowing um, asymmetric stuff, but Hal has some dolls set up with a camera. Um, so as a start, any questions or comments or um, you're all baffled. Clark, go ahead. I wanted to let others go, but I'll make this comment. Um, I like burying the get out that has the those facing pass through or double pass through or whatever so for example if you have the right hand wave of boys and the left hand wave of girls right before you're going to get back to asymmet or to symmetric land um we were talking about doing a pass through and we know if we have those facing pass through or those looking in pass through or those you can pass through um we we end in normal lines back to back and to kind of hide that a little bit you can say those facing start right and left through because the right pull by works and then everyone can do the courtesy turn and they may not be thinking about how they did that or um you know potentially although those facing start load the boat because the very first part of load the boat from lines facing has everyone doing a pass through that one would be more difficult for dancers but the, those facing start a right and left through um that kind of call can work just an idea uh, i like that a lot i mean i'm in favor of trying to make this calling look like the normal calling that we do um, people have done asymmetrics in the past, but it's been so awkward that it makes it feel like a, a gimmick. And part of my, as I said at the beginning, I'd like to rebrand this kind of calling where it just looks like an extension of our normal calling, not some gimmick that's thrown in there. I really like that those facing start a, a right on up through. That's great. I, I don't know that I'd thought about that, but I, uh, I will definitely, I'll definitely use that. That's, that's a really good. It, uh, let me just kind of add to, to, to Clark saying, if you get fancy with this, or if you use this technique for writing out full sequences, you can incorporate the get out with the normalization. So let, let me use Clark's example on those. Let's say you had it set up so that those who are facing pass through got out facing lines and Alaman left right there. So it's possible, okay, you can, it's easy to do this if you're, you know, working out a full call sequence. It's also possible to do this with an asymmetric calling, but that's, that's some more stuff in, in the paper. But just let me raise it as a possibility that you can combine the get out and the normalization into one call. Those oh. facing, you know, pass through, there's your corner, Alaman left. So but excellent point, Clark, and I'm going to use that. Other I, points. I wanted to point out, some, I see some hands up. Sorry, I'll get to you guys in a second. I wanted to point out um, one of the things that you've said. Um, ooh, a new country represented. Um, I wanted to point out one of the things you said and then ask you a question. Welcome, Tom. This is the first time we've had somebody from France here. Um, what I want to point out is I love the basic idea of get him in in a way that doesn't sound like you're trying to do something quirky, if at all possible. Get him 
stay there for as short a period as possible because the longer, as your words, the longer you stay, the more likely you are to get into trouble and it really extends the citing them out, et cetera, beforehand. And then get them out in as non-obvious a way as possible. And you pointed out some really good ones on that with, and, and Clark added it. That those three combinations are going to make this a good success. Now, my question to you, Hal, is you, you said at the beginning, this is good for um, plus and, and advanced dancers, um, but stay away from, but probably not a good idea for newer dancers. And it strikes me that it would be good practice for newer dancers to be, you know, ha not have to depend on men and women in the standard formation just to get them to, uh, um, to do stuff. I wondered if you've ever tried it with newer dancers and found out it's difficult. And after that, I'm going to talk to Mel and then Chris and then Hannah. <laughs> yeah, just a quick answer on that. I, um, let, let, let's think about that. It would be good practice for them in a sense, but if I do it, and I do it with a good mainstream floor on occasion, but I take it slow. And let's think about that for a minute. So if I get them in <laughs> boxes, okay, I'll, I can do touch a quarter, scoot back. People are going to be okay with that. I can, you know, do, okay, those facing out will run. I got, okay. Now I do pass the ocean. Now it's all same sex as pass the ocean. Some, uh, some weaker mainstream dancers are, are really not they don't do that very much okay so as soon as you get into a past the ocean so as long as you keep to calls that they're that they're going to be safe so for example i have boxes that i do swing through men run bend the line maybe take a chance the bend the line takes how about a reverse flutter the left person go and pick up the right person the flow almost takes them in there but my point here is that if you're doing it with mainstream dancers you got to be from reg recognize that you're all got same sex boxes and, and, and they may be very uncomfortable doing, uh, you know, doing a lot of calls. So you got to take it very easy. Ultimately, so in, how would you set up the ladies in a left hand away, for example? I do like the center's cross run to set up a left handed wave when I'm doing it in mainstream. Okay. But again, not all mainstream dancers are great with cross run either. You just got to know your floor. Can you do okay. a ladies you, ladies you turn back? You could, but that's awfully awkward call. From Ocean Wave, I'm not a fan of Ocean Wave's lady do a U turn back because everybody has to cheat a step to get the new hands joined. But yeah, it would work, but I'm not a fan of the flow. Okay, so we had some other questions. Okay, Mel. <laughs> Your hand was up next. No, it was, it was just to build on what Clark was saying as well. I do very simple asymmetrics at mainstream when I've got a good mainstream floor, and that's part of the dancing experience. And you can do things like couple one and two, do a half sachet, and then just do some normal routines to set up your four boys, four girls, that kind of stuff. Easy in, easy out, which I like. Um, just to expand on what Clark was saying, adding in the idea of prepping the dancers, such as heads, touch a quarter, just the facing dancers pass through. Getting them used to that kind of combination of facing dancers do this to set up that, it seems less unfamiliar when you do something completely asymmetric that way. So that, that's all I wanted to add is that prep beforehand goes a long way. And I wish I was here for the whole session. Sorry, I came in late. We had the basic and mainstream committee, great session, and I will be going back to watch it. Thank you. Chris? Yeah. Oh, hi, Hal. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna same same with me about the uh, meeting. Um, the uh, uh, I'm gonna put up real quick just uh, an example. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I do. And uh, like uh, like Hal was saying, uh, it, it's a sparing thing. I mean, what, uh, I'll I'll pull one of these out for some groups once in a blue moon, but uh, and probably just one for the night. Um, but let's see. Here's one. That I did uh, not that long ago, and um, the uh, now something that I that's a different uh, that I, I maybe I'm disagreeing or maybe not with what several people have said uh, about uh, making it a big deal or not, or whether or not you just kind of slip them into it. Um, I always uh, I always make it a big deal just because I want them to not get freaked out that um, 
you know, that, that things are going to look different and to alert them uh, to the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the boys might be in the left hand or the girls might be all in the completely different formation or, or whatever. Um, so when I, so when I started out, uh, and this is the a frequent way that I start them out is by having different couples roll away. And the, uh, I mean, I make a big deal of having you know, number one and number two roll away. Uh, and of course you got to say that or else they'll do one and three anyway. But, uh, but, uh, you know, I put a lot of emphasis into that so that they immediately go, oh, that was different. Some, maybe something's up and they're already kind of in that mind frame. Um, and the way the, I like to get them out with the, uh, uh, with the with a symmetric call that looks like, um, that looks like I didn't do anything. And so suddenly they're, they're symmetric and they're wondering what happened. Um, and again, once I get them out, it's pretty quick. So, you know, girls run, bend the line, ladies in the men's sachet, Alamant, left, right, and left brand. Um, so, uh, but uh, anyway, that's just, uh, that's just my thoughts on, uh, on how I do it. It's a lot of fun. And uh, I, I'm definitely going to go watch the, uh, uh, go watch the whole thing, because I'm sure there's some stuff in there that I can learn that's going to be great. Um, yeah, th th thank you, Chris. Uh, one comment on that. I want to point out that, 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 you know, Chris maybe had a little bit different way to get them back to, to the symmetric. I'm not claiming the way we did this morning is the only way it's a way that's simple and can be proceduralized. And so I'm not claiming, you know, to be the only way, but it's a good way that, that works. So it, yeah, any way that works is a good one, I guess. So okay, next question. Go ahead. Let, let's, let's try if we can to, to keep some of these, and I got you, um, some of these questions to what Hal's been doing rather than having missed what he's done and, and say what I do, and, and which may be repeating what he's doing or, or we're trying to get Hal's approach ironed out, at least I am in my head. Um, just a quick thought. Um, Hannah, you've been waiting patiently. Yeah, not so patiently. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, a comment, uh, when I, I started to play with the same sex because I wanted to do it in class with my basic dancers to teach them, them uh, split circulates because they had a lot of trouble doing all eight circulate. So I was figuring how to get into those boxes in order to, to, to make it easier for the dancers. And a whole new world opened up. It was very, very interesting. And it, it did help the dancers to see the idea of split circulate. Any any other comments? You want to comment on that, Hal? Or okay, we got. I do have a question though for Hal. Go. Uh, I didn't know the rules, so I I uh, I did something bad <laughs> uh, to get the, the people back to normal. And what I did was, uh, well, after the split circulates, same sex. I also said center box circulate and end circulate altogether. All eight circulate. And then boys run and centers trade, bend the line. And then we got a normal line. Oh, well, see what you're, you're I using. The rules then. <laughs> yeah, what you're doing is you used the techniques for getting into the asymmetric, but then you proceeded to call to it. You didn't, you didn't set up same sex mini squares and just call the rules to those squares. You proceeded to call to the whole square. Okay. No. Just That's a perfectly valid thing to do, okay? But it you but you takes more work than when you want to get back out symmetrically. There are some rules, and there's in the in the paper. There's a whole chapter on this. What if you want to just do couples one and two half sachet and just start calling? You can do that, but you got this ugly reality problem of thirty two bad you know sequences, and you have to accommodate that. And there's some rules in the paper about how to do that, but that's more advanced. This thing this morning was a way that I could get the biggest bang for the buck. This is simple. But so you like the first half where you got in the same set of squares, but then you took off and did wild and crazy things. Because I didn't read the, your paper back then. <laughs> no, but yeah, honestly, remember. honestly, to teach dancers this way was, was a great thing to my okay. experience. I just didn't know how to get out of it. I had to work it out myself. Yes, I understand. Well, yeah. remember, there are constraints. 
with this limited rule that we that we did today. Okay, who else? Clark had his hand up. Uh, I was only going to comment that, and this gets back to: should we do this with mainstream or newer dancers? And in the early part of the talk, Hal said, "How often do your dancers have a wave of boys and a wave of girls?" And that doesn't happen except in asymmetric calling. But we do have a wave of boys while the girls are standing around watching in, for example, a quarter tag setup where yes. the boys are all in the middle. And from that position, that's where you could try some of your, um, in a much safer environment, um, can they swing through? Can they spin the top? Can they centers run? Can they bend the line? Now, can they pass the ocean, flutter wheel, reverse flutter, et cetera, et cetera. So if we wanted to experiment in a safer environment with mainstream dancers or expose them to the same gender, all four boys doing it or all four girls, other than the downside of having the others standing around watching, that's the environment we can do that in. And if they get good at that, then you could say maybe they're ready for what we did today. That's an excellent point, Clark. I mean, you could try it a quarter tag setup and do a couple of things, uh, um, you know, centers run, half tag, you know, walk and dodge, even partner trade. And everybody, if, if everything's going good, then do it with the girls and everything's cool. And now you know, okay, I think they're ready to do, do that. That's an excellent point. That would give you a little uh, prior uh, gauge on, on whether they could handle it or not. Good, good point, Clark. I also just wanted to say on my get outs of those facing started right and left through. Cool. Number one, uh, Mel had the great example of in normal calling, you can prep some of, you can prep some of this with those facing do this or that. So it isn't the those facing do or those who can do is not considered unusual. Um, past the oceans, another great one for where you wanna emphasize the let's follow the rules of the call. So from a wave of boys right-handed, girls left-handed, those facing start past the ocean or those who can start past the ocean would get you both back to symmetric land and also blend it in with having that transition happen in the middle of a call. How much are tickets to symmetric land? I've never been there. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was, I, I missed it. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, the phrase symmetric land kept coming up. I yes. said, how much are tickets yeah. to symmetric land? I wonder I what like the rides it. are like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that word, symmetric. Like, you know, the, the good thing about the, the map that I set up, I think mentally it does a lot of good is if you recognize there's symmetric land and there's asymmetric land. And if you think about it that way and that you're crossing over and you're coming back. And so just mental, because if you don't actually get that mental construct, you just see a messed up square. And, and so the mental construct of crossing the bridge, working here and coming back is a really good one to keep you straight. Yeah, Hal, one, one of the, the comments that uh, or not, not a comment, but one of the things that happened to me uh, a fair bit in the past is you'd be calling a dance and you end up somehow with all the boys on one, one side and all the girls on the other side. Some dancer made a mistake somewhere in the line. Using this technique of calls that will work and flow that are non-gendered, but actually flow moving the dancers around and the same kind of routine, if they are symmetrical, will work. If they're not, it will also work because you're doing those facing double pass through as an example in the, in the symmetrical squares, they're not, but you can actually keep the entire floor when you have one square out saying, don't change it. You know, I'm doing this into whatever you want and, and get them back. You may get somebody in the wrong position, but they'll all get back to symmetric land. Eventually it's a, it's a nice little technique to fix a floor without letting them know that they broke it. Yeah, that's a, a Good comment. It is a use of asymmetrics in a clever way, and it's far beyond the scope of what I talked about this morning. Yeah. That's, uh, that's happened to me when teaching a beginner group with uh, just one square, uh, and they, uh, you know, they'll, uh, they'll get messed up that way. And uh, 
then uh, at, at that point, it's just, uh, I mean, they notice that they're, they're all boys and all girls. And so it's just a fun thing to just keep calling to them and not, uh, not, not get all uh, uh, out of sorts about it. And uh, of course, they think that's fun. My, my small challenge group, when every once in a while somebody would make a mistake and they'd, they'd notice the symmetry and try and fix it. And I'd say, don't fix it. I got to practice making and fixing it. It's a handy thing if, if, if one of your squares is down and, and others are dancing. And um, I think, as you said, Mel, you want to keep them dancing. You don't want to point, to point out to them they made a mistake. Yeah. But, the beauty of it is, like, I don't use those facings start something and then everybody finish. I don't use that a lot, but I love taking the simple swing through center circulate or swing through end circulate centers trade centers run getting them where i want to move them around that way and even if it's you know you get into that what odd where you've got one couple facing out on the outside just the uh, ones facing out california twirl and carry on the dancers don't feel that but the nice simple practice getting in and out especially at the mainstream level sets this up for a lot of symmetrical concepts being aware of and being comfortable dancing that when you do start extending or going to different program levels. I have a question for everybody. For those of you who have never done asymmetrics, how many are planning to try it after hearing Hal's, Hal's uh, presentation? That's great. I should raise my hand too, except I don't have a group to try it on. <laughs> Maybe we'll try it with my dolls. Three. Four, good stuff. Um, how many of you, as Hal had said at the beginning, he's got some dowels and a little camera set up on them and he can move people through if people wanna wanna try some of this um, with, with, with real checkers, not real dancers. Uh, if anybody wants to do that, Hal's willing to, to hang around and, and do a little of that. Any? Oh, somebody who's seen the seen the whole presentation. Come on, I, I want to watch this. This is going to be fun. Somebody be brave. Anna, was your hand up for that reason or for something? Uh -huh. Okay, um, let me, let's shift into that. And I will uh, shift over to my, uh, I will shift over to my dance studio here. You will lose, lose my picture. Um, uh, here. Having trouble finding finding my mouse. There it is. Okay. So okay. Can you see my dance studio? That looks great. Yes. Okay. So um who, who wants who wants to kind of be the on the on the mic and and we'll help you through it but uh, you would this experience is good for everybody so somebody oh. somebody raise your hand that wants to try it uh, just just in, in case people don't know if you go up to the picture uh which uh, used to be hal and is now his checkers if you go up there there's a little menu you can click on and if you say pin it'll make it'll make it big so you can really see it a lot easier mm -hmm. Okay, and I think Hannah wants to do the calling. Okay, <laughs> Hannah. Yeah, okay. the, the, Hannah was already trying. Okay, so <laughs> Hannah, let's let's get into let's cross the bridge into asymmetric land. Do you re remember any of those those modules? Uh, I did one of my own. Can I use that? Sure. Uh, heads lead right. Okay. Touch a quarter. Send this trade. And send this run. Not quite as fast as uh, no. <laughs> automated versions, but it, we, it gets there. OK. Ferris wheel. You know your your call sequence is getting pretty long already, and we haven't even got into into the asymmetric land yet. Box okay. Close, box closest to the music. Zoom. Okay. 
All right. Sent us pass through. Okay. Excellent. Excellent job. She got us into same sex, same sex mini squares. Good job, Hannah. Okay. Now it's time for your extemporaneous calling. What would you like them to do? Still me? Sure. Okay. Uh, so what I did in my class was touch a quarter. And then uh, split circulate or same sex boxes circulate. Okay. I did it twice, but uh, okay. okay. What else? And then I did the the get out that that I worked out myself, but uh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's do so. We're in a we are in a uh, kind of a, a handed a handed setup. Is there anything any do a, do a couple more extemporaneous calls. What what would you like them to do from here? A scoot back. Okay. That's a trade. Okay. Walk and dodge. Okay. All right. So let's. Uh, okay. And uh, what else? Uh, reverse wheel around because it was the body. Oh, ex ex I love walk and dodge reverse wheel around. That's great. Okay, let's get them back to symmetric land. Okay, so what? Um, so we need to, they're currently in lines and lines are not a handed formation. So we need to put them into some handed formation. So what would you do to do that? Well, past the ocean or touch a quarter. The, the pat, uh, uh, past, let's do past the ocean. Okay. Okay, they're in a handed formation. Now we want one side or the other to go to a left-handed setup. So how would you do that? Um, well, how do we feel about scoot back and the girls you turn back? Um, after scoot back. We, we said in our thing about interacting with other parts, we could scoot back uh, and uh, okay, I'll, I'll go with that. You know, she's kind of going into the advanced topics by doing the scoot back because that mixes the boys and girls, but that's okay. So here's a scoot back. This would involve boys and girls. And then she has the girls do a U-turn back. Okay, and sure enough, that works. You have a right-handed, left-handed wave. So now, now what's the final thing that happens? Uh, what was it that Clark said? <laughs> yeah. So Clark said, those facing in start a right and a left through and everybody finish. Yeah. That's is, is that what you want? You want, yeah. you're going to vote like, for Clark? Yeah. Okay, here we Clark. go. <laughs> those facing in, they pull by with the right hand and everybody does a courtesy turn. And nice, nice job. And we are back to a, we are back to a symmetric setup, and we're it's you know we're close to close to a good get out, but we really don't care from this point because the whole point was getting asymmetric and getting back. How about a hand for Hannah? Nice job on getting through all that. Thank you. Uh, very very good very good job, Hannah. Okay, let's get back to a square, and and uh, you're going to be a hard person to follow there, Hannah. Okay, we're back in the square. All right. Don, you want to try one? <laughs> I was seeing something about a get out, and I actually got my dolls out here. I was about to, to dance them in the background, but sure. Um, oh, I don't remember how you got in. <laughs> uh, well, let, let's do there the, was the one. Go ahead. Sides lead right in circle to a line. The dancers, for some reason, really like this one. Um, at, tag the line and, and, and face Hal. I should have done a pass through before that, but that's Yeah, it, it would have been better for the dancers, but, but uh, this works too. Okay. Um, 
Oh, what do we do from here? You, you got to bend, bend the line is what locks it in. Okay, I okay. was, yeah, I was going to do a center's trade, center's run and bend the line, but then pass through and bend the line. Well, okay, let the um, notice. I, that, I'm sorry, we're, we're not in a wave. I was thinking we're a wave, never mind. We're, uh, okay, we, we got this, everybody's facing the collar and to get them back in a symmetric formation, we need to do a bend the line, okay? Right. So here, so here we go, bend the line. I'm not trying to get them back into a bend the line into a symmetric yet. I wanted to dance them that way for a moment. Oh, Yo, you did. Okay. It's it's getting scary, but all right. <laughs> uh, now notice. Let's notice where we are though. We are still in symmetric sequence, or uh, yeah, a symmetric land. Because see, the head men are image dancers of each other, but we are in an asymmetric formation. But right. a symmetric sequence, okay? Let's just be clear about that. Oh, how, so how am I going to get into a, an asymmetric sequence in, in a normal? As, as soon as you bend the line, as soon as you bend the line, you will be into I, I, asymmetric land. I got you. Bend the line. <laughs> as soon as we do that, now look to see who the image dancers are and see... You got a boy, a boy and a girl, image dancers. We are in asymmetric land. Okay. What do you so mean? in the procedure, the next thing you do is try to get them into same-sex boxes. Um, so I want to get all the, the, the same-sex boxes, huh? Foursomes. How am I going to do that? Uh, well... The thing that I put as a recommendation, just to, I try to get there quick. I do a um, centers pass through, centers run, and everybody bend the line. Okay. But, but that's it. Any way you do it is a good way. I mean, it, that's not, there's nothing magic about my way. My, my, my thought is to call something and see where it goes. Let's call it. Okay. Let's, Let's do that. Pass the ocean. Pass the ocean. Okay. That didn't help much. So you're you're just navigating them around to try to get to same sex set, set up here. So there's there's where we are. And that didn't help me much. Um, if the centers would have done a past the ocean, the others phase in extend would have been one. Let, let's do a centers run. Boys run. Uh, 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 uh. I want well, to from. Run. from from here, yeah, they would do a, a center's run. Um, and a couple circulate. Okay. And as we're talking about getting it out of it quickly, this is not getting out quickly. <laughs> so if, yeah, if you, take, <laughs> if you take 20 calls to get them into same sex uh, uh, boxes, you're, you're, you don't have much time left in order to, to actually do anything. That's okay. why I try to get into same-sex boxes really quickly. Yeah, but so, I've been doing this for 29 years. Let's do a center okay. straight. Okay, it's getting closer. Yep, and just a couple circulate and bend the line. There's a little bit of overflow there, but for some of the dancers, actually a lot of overflow. Um, and bend the we'll line. Circulate and bend the line. Okay, we're in same-sex mini squares. Good. Now, now, what do you want to do now? So we, we, that's step two. Now it's time for your extemporaneous calling. So what do you want to do with them when you got them? Um, let's do a <laughs> pass the ocean. I like that one a lot. Okay. You right. say that gives them troubles, but that's okay. No, it, it, I said for mainstream dancers, okay. it, may, it may give them trouble. And okay. Single hinge, split circulate. Um, and I could do a, a leader's run here and I'd still be doing something fine. What I wanted to try 
the, I want to, this is what I was looking at, that it might be a way to get normal again. And let's do an all, but it's different than any that you were doing. And I'm curious if it works. And I was trying to do it with myself instead of making myself embarrassed in front of all of you. But do an all eight circulate from here. Okay. Now you're getting, you, you I'm doing this. Totally getting into this. Same sex many squares. I'll, I'll go with you, Don. But I just want to point out that that now we're now we're mixing we're mixing things up again. Okay. Yes, and, and I was. Okay. This is the thing where I was curious whether. You're just curious. Okay, we're trying whether, something that Don's curious about. Whether this would get uh, someplace reasonable. Um, okay. There you go. <laughs> do uh, all the boys run? Um. <clears throat> boys literally when i i understand what you're saying let me point out we're into an area that i didn't talk about but when you're when you're in doing when you're doing your extemporaneous stuff you cannot direct a call remember the rule that says you can't no, i'm you aware can't use, you can't use slide through because um because it has gender built into the call you also can't direct a call at the, a given gender, unless you're trying, you're trying to normalize. So are you? I'm trying to normalize here. I'm okay. trying to normalize. You should have told us that. So, okay. So the men, men run. Yes. Is that it? Okay. Men run. Um, and here we could do a, uh, no, that wouldn't be any good. Um, let's do a men fold. Touch a quarter. Oh, that was n not helping, was it? Um, let's let's try again. <laughs> Men run. <laughs> I want to keep moving instead of undoing three calls here. Um, okay, the answer here, Don, is bend the line. Is bend the is line, but I was the, trying to. The, the flow the flow doesn't work but when we bend the line we're we're back in we're back in a symmetric setup so I, that worked but let me make a point here on on just kind of working through it here you may have lots of um ideas about what might work or some alternate approaches please feel you know feel free to pursue those i mean that's kind of how i learned what i did but for our purposes right here let's try to kind of stick to the procedure that i did uh, just because that's what the point of this is right here. Okay. That's what I was telling other people. And then I didn't follow that. Okay. <laughs> uh, qu question, if I may. Yeah. You're, you're setting, I, I'm noticing that your sequence is remaining the same and you may have covered this at the beginning. I missed, missed the first part of it. Uh, I was looking at something along the line of the, the setup. If you did something like um, sides lead, right. Circle to a line or, or, something to that fine just just to make your lines uh, i don't know uh, past the ocean i should have done a head leap right just so it's easier to see but sorry i've got my my screen invert now if, if i had let's say the right hand wave if the, if just just rotate the whole thing so it will we'll go nearest caller near yeah just just thought i did that good that okay, was so, a that was a that's just an adjustment intergalactic, instead of <laughs> intergalactic split counter rotate right okay, okay. yeah i i don't i don't i don't do that stuff so if you say for instance um but you're in a spaceship okay so uh where was i let's do a hinge i, I was right the first time anyway yeah anyway okay and the sent sorry now if you had for instance one wave do a Let's say the right hand wave do a swing through and the left hand do a trade the wave simultaneously. You'd have to call this, of course, like uh, <clears throat> that wouldn't that wouldn't get you where you're going. You could no, have no. I was just looking at the setup. I saw this on Dawn. Okay. But, okay, so let's just yeah, just have that wave with your hand on it, do a trade the wave. Mm -hmm. And on the other one, have the girls 
uh, or just have them swing through, I guess. So that they're both waves are dancing simultaneously. Okay, and then I had the facing dancers pass through. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work. What I thought it was going to happen. Okay, we're, to get... we're we're still well. See, <clears throat> well, okay. Well, you have no, a, I, yeah, you have I, a right-handed wave and a left-handed wave. And now you want the facing dancers to pass through. Yeah, it, I can't can't remember how Don got onto it, but it, it had if you just had the boys trade on the one wave and did a pass through, it was a setup to the okay. Uh, the foreign now here one. you have three boys out facing in this and one girl in this line. You have three girls and a boy in this line here. Okay, and you are in asymmetric land. Yeah, because all the boys have a girl as an image dancer. So your next is, at least we're following the procedure that I laid out. The next thing you want to try to do is to get to same sex, you know, same sex waves or same sex mini squares. And you're saying, and you can do it by navigating around, but you've got a three in one set up right now. Yeah. So you successfully crossed the bridge. Now your next step would be to get to the mini squares. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't where I was planning, but anyway, okay. let's have the... Uh... Well, my point here was that I laid out a given procedure. Yeah, everybody I'm, I'm stimulated that. their imagination, and everybody wants to try something something new that occurred to them. Okay, so the point yeah. of this was to kind of practice on the procedure that we we did, and nobody cares about that. Everybody's interested yeah. in pursuing their ideas, <laughs> so practice them at home. Yeah, I mean, it's Can, a, yeah, yeah. I, I it's just it's something I saw that Don had set up there, and I was just trying to. Can you just make them into uh, Facing lines, please. Just standard zero line. Okay. Yeah. In other words, I had things messed up, and you were trying to mess. No, them no, up. it was it was in your setup that I saw something there, and okay, so. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, I I, I can't remember okay. exactly can't remember exactly what the setup was, but. In, in the one line you had the boys or the girls trade. Um, let's, I only have about another seven minutes where I have to go. So let's okay. move on to some we, other questions. Okay, can Yolanda? I, yeah, can we go through, I hope I got all the notes right. Can we just go over the one that you presented <laughs> so I can see what it looks like? So I have the notes. Um, you know, the one that starts with a side star through and spread. Okay, I don't. Uh, I don't have my notes in front of. I will. We'll but do I, one, I have. I we'll have the one, notes. I okay, have the notes. we'll do one similar. We'll do one similar to that. Um, and if I don't remember exact, I don't remember my extemporaneous part. Um, okay, so head star through or side star through and spread. But you you had side star oh. through and spread. Yeah. And then, um, and then. Yeah. Pass through pass, wheel and deal. Pass through wheel and deal. And then those with their backs to the collar zoom. Okay. And then the to centers get, pass through. The centers pass through, and then we Not, go into the expert. Yeah. So that so my practice is to try to get the same sex boxes really quickly. Because you can't have your whole call sequence expend out 30 calls, okay? Okay. And then this will leave as much time as possible for doing the asymmetric extemporary. Okay, so, so then the next, the next thing you had was touch a quarter, split circulate once and a half, and flip the diamond. Okay, there's split circulate once, there's a half. Okay, there's split circulate once. And there's a half. So there, there's our diamonds. Okay, and then ladies okay. trade the way. Ladies wait, trade we, the way. Wait a minute, wait. We haven't done a flip the diamond yet. Oh, there's our diamonds. Right. Here's the, here's the flip the diamond. Yolanda, okay. I'm just pointing out that we can't trade the wave until we have a wave. Yeah. Remember? Yes. Yes. I know. Okay. I was, so I was looking at my paper. Formation. Yes. Um, okay. So. 
Ladies, ladies, trade the way. Okay. Okay. Those facing in pass through. Yep. Now we're back wheel, to symmetric again. Wheel and deal. Well, that yeah, that was normalized. Wheel and deal. Men zoom. <clears throat> Centers pass through. Alaman Lem. So that is yes. That was, well, that was the whole that was the whole sequence. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I got it right. Okay, good. Al, I okay. have, I have a quick question. Sure. If I were to call those couple in, from a squared set, any couple that wants to half sachet. And sometimes <laughs> normal and sometimes don't don't bother doing it but sometimes call squares will stay normal some will have couples one and two half sachet and i go through this same kind of a thing um can i will that work no no here's here's why that'll get us into one of those 23 states of yeah you know yeah no here's why so you do any couple who wants to half sachet, okay? Let's yeah. say the heads half sachet or the sides half sachet, the square stays symmetric, right? Right. Okay. Let's say, let's say only one couple wants that. Just couple number one does a half sachet, okay? Yeah. Now and you and you start dancing. Well, think about it. So the head couples, the boy and the girl are image dancers, but for the side couples. Boys are still image dancers and girls, so you cannot get in. You cannot get into same-sex um, lines or waves because you still have one couple who's in a symmetric um, image dancer. I know uh, that way you can get three and one lines, but you can't get four and zero lines doing it that way. Okay, I understand you can't get same-sex squares, but the the four two couple things you have, you can dance around. And, and then they get out. I can see that. Let me let me add to what you said, Don. Okay. I've seen that done. Here's the technique: you do any couple who wants to half sachet, and then you just call like a uh, you just call like a a, a a square that you would normally you know I can't sight call that back, but you do from that point you just call what would be a normal sequence to get them to their corners, okay. And you can alaman left, come back to your partner, swing your partner, everybody, everybody promenade, okay? Because everyone's still with their partner. You may have same-sex corners or not, but yeah, I've seen that done. And that I would put in more of the gimmick category, which I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to, I'm trying to rebrand normal asymmetric dancing. But yeah, I've seen that done. But to me, that's a gimmick. I, I'm with you. I see that. So how? Just a question for you. In your presentation, did you limit your mini squares to same sex mini squares? Um, yes, in my presentation, I did. I've had, um, um, oh shoot, uh, there's a caller friend of mine who pointed out that you could do the same technique with heads and sides of mini squares, Correct. which also which also works. But um, my point this morning was to get the simplest procedure that I could that was consistent and that always worked. So yes, I in my presentation, it was same sex. But let me tell you a comment on that. Dancers find same sex mini squares quite shocking. They haven't seen them much, especially right. when they're two going. But if you go head sides mini squares, that that's dancers see that all the time. You know, it looks like two boys and two girls. So even though from a choreography point of view, you can get it to work out, there's no impact for the dancers. It doesn't look cool because it's what they're used to, boys and girls. Right. Well, although although it is um, it is different in the fact, uh, like uh, I'm, I'm, I'll say that the the myth, the the way that I do it anyways, is that I, I don't actually get the square to do symmetrical square dancing during that process. I will say uh, like. Uh, I'll, I'll get the heads on one half of the square, the sides on the other half of the square, and I'll have the heads do something that the sides don't do. 
and I'll get the sides to do something the heads don't do. And I'll, I'll, I'll switch around their formations so that, you know, maybe even the heads will be facing head walls and sides will be mm -hmm. facing side walls. And, uh, you know, I'll make formations that are completely weird to them. But at the same time, they're doing standardized choreography and it's, and it's easy for them to dance and make it through. But then the get in and the get out is very easy. It's, it's actually just as easy as, as what you were doing before. Uh, actually, with your dolls in front of you, if you have the side star through, we're talking about easy get ins and get outs, and just have the have the near box of four zoom, and the centers pass through. So now we've got a box of heads and a box of sides, and so now you can have the heads do anything you want, and have the sides do anything you want, and then at the end of it, uh, again with your same uh, formation, you can say, okay, well the sides. Uh, you know, step to a wave, the heads uh, do a left touch. And now you've got, no, not a touch a quarter, just a touch. Oh. Yep. And then, and then you can have those facing directly pass through. And That's what I was that looking will, for earlier. <laughs> and that will fix your, your symmetry in the square and give you something that's, that's easy mm -hmm. to deal with. But, it, but at the same time, you can call this to mainstream dancers and you'll get pretty much 100% success because they're dancing in regular couples and they're not, you're not forcing them to dance in the same right. Session. That's a good point. And it, it allows you, the asymmetric formation allows you to call separately to the heads and the sides. So it's the same concept as I laid out, except instead of same sex mini squares, it's heads and sides mini squares. And that, thank you for adding that in because I was uh, aware that I don't do that very, very much, but you're right for uh, it allows you those benefits but from the point of view of the dancers it's it looks pretty normal because it's still boys and girls doing normal choreography okay and do you want to see a really cool uh, uh get out that, i'm that you could use? i'm i'm out i'm out of time okay, okay i'm gonna fine. have to to go so um i i don't you guys can stay on and talk if you'd like but i've run out of time so i have to go okay let's uh give uh, hal a hand again Hal, if you could switch your cameras for a second so we can yeah, okay. do a hand instead of the dolls. Oh, uh, that's a good, good, yeah, yeah. Well, my dolls were great dancers, admit it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> or you can leave it that way if you really have to run. Thank you so yeah, much. No, I, I got Thank that. You. Okay. Thank you so much yeah. for the presentation. And we hope, as you and I talked on the phone, um, hopefully, you will be able to join us for some of the other presentations that people do and get some of the other callers in your area to also join. We are yeah, I was unaware of this until Larry twisted my arm into saying I would look great on in the movies. And Thank so you, Larry, Larry. kind of got me here. And now I know that you guys exist. I, yeah, I'm, it sounds very interesting. We've done, oh, over, yes. we've done over 80 sessions of all the way from, from here to, to very basic and, and mm -hmm been fun and it's been yeah well there's always somebody that doesn't get the word i was the one on this one <laughs> so anyway thank you for uh inviting me i appreciate it have a, have a good day thanks again thank you clark uh, i mean brian got the wrong wrong end of your name you just gave me <laughs> an interesting <laughs> oh we have a real clark around uh never mind <laughs> you, you gave me an interesting <laughs> idea of, of i mean Hal was definitely trying to stay away from gimmicks and get in and out as, as smoothly as possible. But I thought of a real good gimmick using your approach to calling one thing to the heads and one to the sides. If you're sharing the stage with another caller, you could tell original heads, you listen to this guy, original sides, you listen to me. And you alternate calls and just call to your foursome for a little while and then get out. We... Oh, uh, when when uh, Dave Wilson and I shared an hour at uh, at IPAC uh, in the A2 hall, and we did exactly that, although we didn't do it with heads and sides, um, uh, Dave called for the girls and I called for the boys. <laughs> and uh, we did we did asymmetric get in, get out, and we did uh, asymmetric alternating calls, and then we did asymmetric, uh, uh, he called for the girls and I called for the guys. And it was it was probably the most fun I ever had calling. I could see that. Well, calling with Dave is fun, period. But, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that sounds like, as I say, it sounds like a good hack. Um, and I assume the dancers enjoyed it too. There, there, there was a large group that year of 
uh, Czech Republic dancers. And so the average age in the, in the room lowered because they were all in their 20s. And uh, it was a great energy in the room. And there was virtually nothing we could do to challenge those dancers. They were capable of almost anything. So it was, it was rather fun. Any other uh, post-Hal comments? <laughs> Clark, then Mickey. Um, two. Um, one was, I want to get the girls into one-handed wave and the boys into the other. Um, if you're calling advanced, girls past the sea, boys past the ocean is obviously a good way to do it and use one of the calls. The second is, um, I don't think I've ever heard a calling method explained as well and as succinctly as what Hal did today. So th that was really impressive. And as callers who maybe teach other callers things like, here's how we're gonna do our first site calling, here's how we're gonna do this and that. We know that when new callers get up and try to follow the algorithm that you've presented, they often go off the rails. And I was kind of surprised and a little disappointed at how presented something today and almost none of us were able to do it or follow it, even though we did a great explanation either because our minds were so wide ranging or we had other preconceived notions, almost none of us were willing to do exactly what he did and show that what he taught us, we had learned. I thought that was a little disappointing on our part. Well, to one extent- Except he, for Hannah. <laughs> he presented stuff, but we didn't have time to absorb it. I took at least five screenshots during the session there are certain key i key heard them they were great i knew exactly what you were doing i, that was, I was wondering <laughs> if that noise was going to be disturbing people but um yeah at certain points that i thought it'd be really good to remember these points and go back and look over them um as i say he present we've talked in the past about teaching versus training um he presented good stuff um and gave some time to practice it but but yolanda was the only one having written down stuff that, that tried to follow his things who want to see the dolls work um, I, I actually saw him do this presentation at caller lab uh, a few years ago he mentioned, and, he mentioned, and it was it was quite well done back then uh, yeah. i i enjoyed it but uh but in, in my mind i felt that it was because it's more of a a primer to asymmetric calling um it it, there are certain limitations to it that that are what I think limiting to what you can possibly do. Because um, I, I tend to go a little crazier than that. So, um, but, but yeah, it, it was probably the most complete I've ever seen uh, the theory for, for the asymmetric uh, primer. Uh, so I thought it was excellent. Brian, he mentioned one that he had done this with, with Dave Wilson, I believe. Um, and two that the best thing is to get in as easily and quickly as possible, play around with it and get out as easily and quickly as possible. Um, just as a, a way to get started with it. And he mentioned he wrote a, a book mostly to himself, but made it available. And it's available at his website right now. Um, I have it up on line. I can't remember exactly how many pages or chapters, but he said he was only covering chapter one of the book. And if you're, you know, just to get people so they can wet their feet if they want to start. If you want to go deeper into his book, just look for it under halbarns.com. And I downloaded it a few days ago, but I haven't taken time to read. I wanted to hear his presentation first. But um, what, what, what struck me on it is the way the setup difference most people when they approach asymmetrical and most presentations I've seen on asymmetrical, you start with couple number one to a half sachet or couples two and three to the right and left through and you, you start switching and you end up in these three and one combinations of, you know, three boys, one girl, et cetera, and you, you dance asymmetrics that way. What I liked about what he was doing is when you separated and you got four boys, four girls, your sequence 
wasn't changing. The boys were either in, the boys were either out, the girls were either in, the girls were either out. It makes it so much easier because I noticed every time somebody was moving, you were a movement away, you could do a boys run or a center's trade and everybody's back with their partners. The sequence is there and either the boys are in or the girls are in exactly what, what you have. The others are crossed. They're not one, three, four, two, uh, one, three, two, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that was, that was just the big thing that opened. That's why when Don, you did your setup, I saw that with boys trade on one side you've still got your sequence and then you could have the pacing dancers pass through to get that you've still got your sequence being kept throughout this system and that makes the resolution so much easier than trying to fix one one dancer or one couple out of sequence um real good food for thought <laughs> um no i can't yeah. remember if you were the other the wow. other thing that that kind of happens like when i was i was going to nationals and I was doing asymmetric uh, site resolution in the, the advanced hall, some of the callers, uh, well, I'm going to say most of the callers thought I was insane for, for doing that. Um, but when they asked me about it, I said, well, what it does is it, it's not about doing the asymmetrics. It's not about showing the dancer something weird because almost all of the asymmetrics that I do are very simple. But what it does for me is the dancers then choose to listen carefully to everything I say. Um, and then it, get, it allows me to get away with a lot more material um, than, than some other callers normally get away with because they think I'm gonna do something weird. Um, and so all it is is to me, it's, it's, a, it's an exercise in listening um, for the dancers. Uh, once, once they get into that frame of mind, then I can almost call anything. I've always said the first thing you try to do on a, on a party night or a lesson one is your main job is to get the dancers to listen to you. Um, it's it's not something they're used to doing. What's nice about that, Brian, is you're getting them to listen to you without calling something weird to try and trick them into listening to you. It's just right. they know it, it feels different. Oh, just the heads do this, just the sides do this, ears are turned on. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'll say, you know, near, near box of four, you know, scoot and weave far box past the ocean, you know, they're, they're, they're having to pay attention very carefully in order to make it through. And there's, there's nothing ultimately challenging about what I'm calling to them, but at the same time, they have to listen carefully. And so then for the rest of the entire tip, they tend to listen uh, for almost anything I do. So then I can, I can pull in some extra weird stuff and they can, they'll, they'll end up getting most of it. On, on a totally different subject, Tom, I want to welcome you for, I mean, you, you went to your picture instead of your face, but welcome you to joining our Saturday thing and hope you'll join us for more of them. Um, and in case you guys don't know, Tom is from um, France and we haven't had France join us. That makes 10 countries instead of nine we've had, still four continents. Uh, <laughs> and if you guys missed it, um, Mel, we will not be meeting the next two weeks, but we will be at, back after that. You want to make an announcement of what, what your email was as to what your schedule coming up is? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we're having the session today, which is building a better basic. And then we're switching to a fortnightly schedule. So we're just going to be going every second week. That's tentative. Uh, I, I put out a, um, a call, <laughs> no pun intended, a call for uh, a number of callers that have been suggested as presenters. And if their schedule is, you know, they're on a day that we weren't scheduled, I'm more than flexible of changing that. I'll, I'll still be posting the announcements, but uh, we're going to be switching to a fortnightly schedule as everybody's slowly rolling back into getting more busy, getting more dancing out. So uh, when the invitations go out, I'll, I'll be posting that, but we're still going to be same time, nine o'clock Sydney, Australia time. Oh, dark hundred European time, whatever that works out. And uh, sometime in the middle of the day, morning or evening in the United States so on it, Saturday. East coast is 7 p.m. Um, interestingly enough, you used to have lots of people planned ahead. And now not so many. And I finally have the next, after we get back, the next five weeks scheduled. Yeah. <laughs> now, I've, I've, I've got... Um, this week, next week, and the following week planned. 
And then I don't have anything until October. Uh, Mike Sikorsky is going to be coming back uh, and doing a session with us. I've got a lot of people say, yeah, I've got to do that. I've just got to get my schedule going. Uh, you know, uh, Tony's got to send me his. Betsy got has got to send me hers, you know, when she's free. Mickey and Chris have uh, got a session that they're going to be doing. Hint, 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 hint. That they promised. So we just have waiting, to get their schedule. <laughs> waiting impatiently. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to add something to um, Hales. Um, get in. I got in late, got apologized, but I was uh, responsible for a uh, meeting on the color lab side, so I had, I had something to do. Vicki, we had several people that were on that color lab meeting, and Bill Euler got in probably 15, 20 minutes before the other three of you. So you guys didn't have an excuse. You should have joined us. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Bill, 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 Bill was smart because uh, we were going around in circles on a specific movement, which was about circles and going around and around and around in a circle till we all decided that we're all saying the same thing. Uh, why are we, why are we still talking about this? And then the meeting more or less ended. Not quite yeah. that, not quite that blatant, but, and, or that non-politically correct, but essentially that's what was going on. Um, and, and not forgetting the chairs had uh, um, talks about a procedure afterwards. So this is, uh, yeah. But anyway, if I understood right what Hell said, there is one thing I, I, I've been doing some asymmetric column as well. And sometimes I had um, like couple number from lines, a uh, couple number one go right and left through and then work with heads or sides on one side. But to divide, as I see, he would have liked to have boys and girls on, on one side or to get in the box. Um, there's a neat thing which I sometimes use for um, um, the announcements, which is um, side couples, um, what was it? Um, lead to the right, right and left through and do an eight chain your couple number. And um, then you would have you would have normal couples, everybody facing to the stage. So and you could even call. I, I just want to interrupt for one second. Tom, I apologize for bringing you in and then not letting you talk. And now you've got to leave. Happy birthday to your wife. And please join us again sometime. We've, we've communicated by email a lot, but never in person. So this almost was great. <laughs> happy, happy birthday to your wife. You're talking and you're not muted, but I don't know what's going on. We don't hear you. Still don't hear you. Now, now you're muted. There's now you're muted. Your microphone's not broadcasting, Tom. <laughs> it's all, it's all, it's all well, welcome and, and goodbye to, to That's Tom. That's in French, isn't it? <laughs> well, maybe the first results of um, restricting energy in Europe um, due to the <laughs> no microphone. Sorry to interrupt, Michael. <laughs> But, but yeah, so you would have um, couples standing behind behind each other, um, all facing the stage, and you could either call trade and roll, and you would have a, a line with the boys on one side on the girls, or just face your partner if you're working in the basic mainstream program, pass through and bend the line, and then you would have boxes with the boys and girls. Um, so this would be a pretty smart way to get in there as well. There's obviously an awful lot to explore. And yeah. And there is. Um, I've never been interested in it before, but maybe, maybe this tweaked my interest to, to it's fun. get my dolls to also, have fun. You can also have normal zero lines and uh, ask two boys in the same line, like uh, boy number one and the boy in the same line. Dancers tend to know who is boy number one, but then it's a problem. Who is number two, three, and four? Two and four is the difficult, but then those two boys with the girls you are facing pass through. Then you have one boy right hand and yeah. right girl for left hand. I would have one suggestion for Hal. He set something up real early and said the couple with their back to the caller Zoom. I would have think the dancers could interpret couple facing the caller Zoom. They probably would be able to register that a little more quickly in their minds and you can get the same effect but yeah but how could you could you do it from uh, like if nobody's uh, having the the color behind or in front could you not just say uh, any four people in each square zoom well then they've got to talk about it with the, you probably could and and have 
one square different from another, but then they've got to talk about it within yeah. themselves. But that yeah. it, make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's where you get into the old rule. If you give the dancers a choice of two things, they're going to pick number three. <laughs> yeah, I'd have the center box zoom because that's me. That's close to the corner. <laughs> That's just roll clerk. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what not to do is um, head uh, head uh, head couples or, or anybody uh, if if you feel like it roll away it, because I, I find that if I said something like you know uh, uh, head couples if you feel like it roll away they'll all roll away <laughs> like no 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 some of you want to not do it and they're like well you said to do it I'm like, oh, <laughs> so what you were just saying about the the third option mel reminds me of the fact that if there's a 50 50 chance of getting it right there's a 70 30 chance of getting it wrong but um, yeah well it's it, it's like when you learn to resolve a square once you've paired up one couple you're 50 percent resolved once you've moved that one couple facing it you're 75 percent resolved you're resolving really to one person because you put everybody else where you want them. Now, those odds are in your favor. So if you've got 75% chance of being right mathematically and a 25% wrong, why is it we always end up on the 25% when we're learning? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It's just the same thing in the supermarket. You're always standing on the wrong lane when cashing. Yeah. <laughs> My, my, my thinking of that, Michael, is that I'm, Mickey, is I'm, I'm really good at picking the shortest, slowest line. I can break any cash register. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> oh, Hannah, you, 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 you made a comment in there and it, uh, earlier on, and it's one that's come up over and over. It's the difference between calling with dolls and calling with dancers. And I'm hearing this a lot, which is uh, the fastest way to get to a left-hand wave is just have everybody do a U-turn back from a right-hand wave. Roll that twice. Is, that is, well, even, even roll twice. It is so awkward because your hands are forward in front of you. Your hands are not like this. And if your hands are forward in front of you, if you do a U-turn back, your wave is like this. So you're basically saying everybody turn around and then back up two steps to make a left-hand wave. That's, maybe that's, been... that's the difference between dancers and checkers. Yeah, true. But if you do, if you have a motion doing that, in the motion, it's easier to do a U-turn back instead of from standing wave. I would yeah, say I pack, like your she would be cool. turn around. Pardon? Sorry, what was that? I like to scoot back and turn around. Yeah, because that's a motion, and and you you let go yeah. of your hands. Because yeah. you're yeah you're flo you're flowing into it, and they, they know yeah. where to go, and you can you can prompt that. But you hear this a lot: swing through, and everybody roll twice, or some something to that effect. Yeah. And suddenly, oh wait a minute! But I'm here. If I'm going to roll, my hands are in front of me. I'm not standing side shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, that's why I, I prefer a well placed shazam. So it's a hinge and turn back. I was thinking for getting one of the waves right-handed and one left-handed. I mean, obviously he had the example of follow your neighbor girl spread or follow your neighbor boy spread. Um, trade the wave boys go twice or trade the wave girls go twice is not a bad thing. Yeah. Mm. And if you have that boy, girl, boy, girl, you can even do on one side, you know, this, this group trade the wave, the other one's just boys trade facing dancers pass or you're going to get the same setup but you're going to get that sequence issue. When, uh, when he was talking about this and, uh, uh, and they, and somebody first mentioned the, uh, some, you know, everybody passed some the ocean, some the sea. I, I, I was waiting for Mickey to get all excited. <laughs> Another reason for pass the sea at basic. <laughs> right. No, it, uh, pass the sea at basic is, it's a logical thing. And, but it, it's not really needed, but it's a logical thing for one reason and one reason only, in my opinion, and that's to fix the controversy or force the fixing of the definition 
of past the ocean where the styling and the definition are in total conflict with each other. That would be the only real good reason to put it down at basic. Past the sea should be passing with left shoulder. I no. It's so an, uh, awkward. That, well, that, that's the whole point of pass, face, make a wave. Sure. Right. I, I do understand. Pass, that it's not pass a face. But you hear things like slide through, make a left hand wave. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. What is that? Slide through, girl, girl is not a very No, 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 no. From standard couples, I know, I know, but make that art. Slide through, make a left hand wave is very common. Pass the sea is very awkward. Why is that? Because we do pass the ocean with a styling that is contrary to the definition of pass through, face, and make a wave. Same as slide through. It's the same movement. You have to pass the right shoulder and then turn awkward to the left and have a left hand with each other. Yeah, it, it is. A, it's a stupid, exactly. It's, it's one of those things. It's yeah. because past the ocean and past the sea are not mirror images of each other. No. That's right. Yeah, and that's an unusual thing. We don't have a lot of calls that are like that. And does anybody yeah, what? Does yeah, what? Ever call left past the ocean? Right, my left shoulder past the no, ocean. I will right. call it left, left Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I agree with you wholeheartedly, Hannah. The the slide through itself, you know, a same sex slide through. Other but than the boys. you know, for the boys, it's a touch yeah. of quarter, but yeah. for the girls, it is not a you know four girls slide through and left swing through because that is awkward as hell. Yeah, it is. So I'm I'm observing something here. You guys that came late because you were in a mainstream thing are continuing that extended mainstream group here. <laughs> I wasn't there. Sorry, Don. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something about the. Uh, uh, just to, to uh, throw in one little more example on the on the U-turn back uh, issue, um, uh, and uh, Hannah was talking about how if you set up a good flow like with the scoot back, it's easier. And um, uh, uh, somebody said, uh, you know, do it using a Shazam. Brian. And, yeah, Brian. And the uh, and so um, on the Shazam one. Of course, you're, you're activating the two people to work together and then uh, do it. But but one that occurred to me that would not be very successful is um, from normal couples uh, past the ocean and the girls do a U-turn back because there they do the past the ocean. They, they got that, the, you know, the U-turn back is coming up. Uh, uh, you know, you're probably calling it as they're finishing their their uh, hooking on. Right. Because they're going to dance it like fan the top or something. And the like we were just talking about and the um uh th there's a high probability that instead of doing a u-turn back they're going to trade or do some other funny thing um so it's so you have to be sort of really cognizant of exactly what the flow is kind of what's in their head and where they're what they're feeling uh if you want to take advantage of the uh you know of, of doing the u-turn back trick out of the flow yeah well, if you if you want to have real fun just taking a, a page out of brian's page book standard past the ocean girls turn back and roll which way are they going to turn <laughs> well after they finish trading they'll do <laughs> turn back <laughs> ah, but <laughs> well which way do they you turn back after it passed the ocean outward or inward uh, so just... <laughs> what i'm saying is they won't what they'll do is they'll do fan the top and you turn back <laughs> yeah i know I, I know that how about calling past the ocean and others you turn back That's wow. the response I get from the dancers. There are no others. It's just <laughs> killing time here. <laughs> uh, I mean, to, to me, that that is more of a valid discussion like you with the uh, Hannah with the slide through for the girls, followed by a left handed action is completely awkward as heck. That's a more valid discussion than some of the other discussions that are being had about semantic terminology. However, girls have, have gone used to do it, so we create a better flow by knowing that we have to do this movement, hmm. but it's not, not nice. Yeah, usually if I'm, if I'm getting the dancers to do a, um, a, a 
a, for, a, a thing where they're trying to get one right-handed wave and one left-handed wave. I'll have them in facing lines of four and it'll be, uh, you know, boys facing, girls facing, and I'll say, everybody do a right and left through. Then I'll say, girls do a Dixie style to a wave and the boys pass the ocean. And at that point, now you have a left-handed wave of mm. girls and you have a right-handed wave of boys. They've all done something separately. You've called to everybody and the, the whole floor was moving all at the same time. Um, I get the girls to do the Dixie style because they're more likely to actually complete the call correctly. Uh, the boys will probably mess it up. So it's, uh, I, I tend to get the girls to do their job for, uh, instead. Um, if you try to get the boys to do it, there's, there's a higher likeliness that they're gonna break the square down. So that's why I tend to get the girls to do it. Yeah. We don't come yeah. to the turn. Yeah. The other thing with, with Hal is doing, working boys together, girls together, there is a much higher probability of success when you have four boys dancing and four girls dancing doing calls like Dixie style or recycle, et cetera, because they know or the automatic mentality is, okay, am I the girls part? Am I the boys part? Even though it doesn't exist, that's just a dancer mentality that's ingrained. When you have three and ones on a pass mm. the ocean or half sashayed couples, then you have that, uh, the gender is there again and that confusion. And that, that was one of the other big strengths I, uh, that was passing uh, when Don, when you were doing your example, it was sticking in my mind. When you get that three and one, that's where you get the dancer confusion. And it's a lot less when you have four dancers of the same sex. Yeah, yeah. Four, well, the dancers tend to just want to fix it themselves. Yeah. The, the four dancers, four men or four women, at least two of them are doing the the part they're That's using. That's right. Um, I wonder. We it would have been interesting if we'd had some. Well, I know the, the Japanese callers, women callers, frequently have all women squares because they can't get any men to join the group, and there are probably it's other Russia. Areas. Yeah. Russia also. Yeah. It'd be kind of interesting to see how they thought of this, and um, and sometimes singles groups too, whether having four women dance with four women felt any different to them or not. I, I think the best way of teaching that is, is at the beginning of the class, say you're assigned to the man's position for the class. And, and then we'll go on and assign you to the next, the other position for the next class rather than getting them mixed up. But. Well, I find, I find the only group of people that, that absolutely hate asymmetric calling are hexagon squares. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> sure. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, Don, it's a it's a it's a good question because for in most cases, uh, well, with the gay and lesbian group that I was calling for in uh, Canada, with the Japanese callers and, and dancers that come here, and with uh, some of the conversations I've had with some of the European Russian dancers, boy girl is not an issue. They choose right at the beginning. Am I dancing as a boy? Am I dancing as a girl? In that square, some of them wear a sash, some of them don't, but they make that decision. And it's a, you know, and a group of, of all girl dancers or all men dancers for that matter, depending where you are, or gay dancers switching, they make the choice. Am I dancing as a boy? Am I dancing as a girl? You know, and the argue of terminology usually only comes in when people uh, force that issue upon them. They say, well, I know I'm dancing the girl's part. I know I'm dancing. I, I happen to be a man. I'm dancing the girl's part or uh, I'm a girl. I'm dancing the boy's part is never really an issue except to somebody from the outside looking in thinking we've got to get politically correct on this. So they know what they're dancing, but they may not know what may not fully be aware of the rest of the square, what the others are dancing. So that if you get them into asymmetric mm -hmm. things like Hal did with four men here and mm -hmm. four women here, they may not appreciate that they're as isolated as they are. They may just think, oh, this is just what's right. happening. But. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I've only got limited experience uh, on, on that, but I found that when you have a group of all the same sex, they've never had a problem distinguishing who's the boys, who's the girls, because they know when they start and they're used to doing that. Oh, they, they have problems. Um, I've, they? I've called for, yeah, I've called for multiple gay clubs and uh, a lot of times what they'll do is they will, they will switch sex mid tip. Yeah, that's, um, so mid, that's midway through the tip, they they sort of go, okay, well, I'm going to be the girl this time. They swap, and they think it's really cute, but then all of a sudden they forget that they they <laughs> they did the swap. Yeah, and and I will, as a caller, I'll be I'll I'll say, you know, can all the boys put their hands up? And six hands will shoot up, <laughs> and then 
and then they realize, oh, oops, I made a mistake, and they bring their hand down. And yeah. they you you get that with straight dancers as well. Oh yeah, you know people yeah. will switch. I'm going to dance the girls' part, and that's where the confusion goes. But generally, you're going to get that confusion when you start doing asymmetric stuff anyway. Well, and we... they'll realize quickly, oh, I better not switch. Okay. That that's that's just a nuance of personality. I'm guessing that in some countries where English is not as common as it is in US and Australia and Germany and Sweden, I'm thinking Japan and Czech Republic and, and probably Russia, that they learn boy means the person on the left side. They don't necessarily mean it's it's a younger man. Um, it's just a, a position and rather than it's it's related to their sex. I, I'm, or the, I, I don't know that. I, um... Hannah, you'd be able to speak that better than I will as what, what it is now. But when I was taught dancing, as I said, I had an English translation of a German translation of the English translate uh, of, of the caller lab definitions. And boy was the standard setup, standard couple boy on the left, girl on the right. But there is a boy's part and there's a girl's part. And there was, unless there was a gendered necessity for a call, such as slide through a star through or anything with a courtesy turn, boy girl wasn't relevant recycle had no gender square through had no gender swing through had no gender and and it was taught that way that there was only a few gendered calls other than you know your right and left brand your promenades and all those other kinds of things it, it, it's not that it's not that non-english speakers don't know any english words at all and uh of the english words that they're liable to to uh actually learn uh in in a square dancing environment, I, I would think that boy and girl would would actually be um, uh, what words that they would know. And they, yeah, those it are the was, sort, those are the kind of words that they're very likely yeah. to know anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was it wasn't a matter of the words. It wasn't a matter of boy or girl. It was a matter of the specificity of take a movement like recycle, for instance. Yeah, the terms ends and cent. It was not boys and girls. It was ends and centers. That's the way it was. There was specificity in the way it was translated so that it would avoid that confusion. Right. Oh, we, we had callers here in Vancouver who thought that a recycle was a girl's turn back and then wheel and deal. That's how they, that's how they taught it. Yeah. And is it, is it, is it still <laughs> being taught that way or is it more boy girl? And then you got to fix it afterwards when you, when you start using an extended application. Uh, so, so from what I've seen, at, le at least here in Vancouver, um, almost always recycle is taught with the with the boys on the ends and the girls in the middle and they, they they learn it by root they don't actually learn it by definition and then at a later date uh they're given the extended application of having the girls on the end and the boys in the center and that tends to be a little more difficult for them because they've never seen it before um you know it's it's not like it's it's not considered standard choreography but the the standard for recycle uh, here is is always having the boys on the end of the wave. Uh, they're not necessarily teaching it incorrectly. They're just they're just only teaching it from that one position. So the yeah. the dancers become very comfortable doing it that way and not comfortable doing it the other way. Uh, get, getting back to the gay club thing about the about the boys and girls, the uh, I, I, they I mean certainly uh, they unless they get cutesy and try and switch like you said they don't they don't usually get confused about you know. I, Who's a boy and who's a girl? But the but 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 the um, the business where we uh, mix them up asymmetrically and have all the boys in one and all the girls in the other, that one, uh, you know, I I mean the whole reason for doing the boys and the girls thing is so that people can just look and tell, and 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 ha and doing the asymmetric thing where they're split like that is uh, I'm not sure if it's any easier or. Uh, the same, but but just when they're dancing around, if, if even symmetrically, if you say all the, all the girls do something, and if it's a quarter tag or a, a, you know an eight chain, or if it's something where the girls are all in the middle or all the boys are all in the middle, then that's one thing. But if they're in like waves or lines or something, and you say all the girl, like if you were in lines and said all the uh, uh, the girls trade with each other, um, they would they would have to work it out right because they don't know who the other boys and girls are they they know what their part is so if they're all together uh you know that's one thing in the asymmetric thing they might not notice until you when you when you first set it up they might not notice that it's all the girls and boys together you'd have to say oh see all the girls are together 
all the boys are together and then they go oh yeah okay and then you know then they would remember but uh you yeah, know but then you get then you get into the really weird abstracts of putting them in all boys all girls getting them into the say a tidal wave and saying right do something now you've got all the boys do this all the girls do that then you get all the boy boys do this but all the girl girls do this and all the boy girls do this and all the girl boys do that what language is that <laughs> brian is i was i was just remembering something that al stevens did in germany a while where, where you had boys and girls but you had boy boys and girl girls and girl boys and boy girls it was, it was just a little fun gimmicky thing but i can't i wish i had had i could remember what it was he did I like Abbott and costello Al yeah. well I, I i remember it it's a um you you get all four boys in the middle of the square and you get them to do a right and left through and then you say flutter wheel have the boy boys or have the girl boys pick oh. up the boy boys and we're going back with you yeah and then you know, reverse the flutter and have the girl boys pick up the boy boys and we're going back with you yeah and it, it was it was hilarious because then he had the boys and girls together but was still using the term the boy boys and girls girls but it was very simple choreography but it was, it was hilarious brian um when you talked about teaching standard formations for you know half sashayed yeah what am i trying to say recycle is the example boys on the end versus girls on the end um what i usually do is i will teach the most commonly used way the standard formation guys on the end girls in the middle right hand waves on the recycle example but i will say the end, the centers do this and the ends do that and after they're comfortable with that and and ready to go on to something else i'd say now we've learned recycle but here's the neat thing we can do it this other way too with the same definition and then i will add the additional thing if they're going to go on and dance to other callers that are doing that kind of thing and what have you so i, I i'll teach it one way and when they're comfortable teach it the other but the original teach doesn't say girls do this and boys do this the, the definition yeah. will be clear enough so i can say you know same definition we're just going to extend the the, the way we do it yeah. Yeah, well, for, are, fortunately, yeah. fortunately, when I when I learned recycle back in the day, um, uh, the it was popular at the teen festival to do um, two thirds recycle, and and not necessarily legal at at the mainstream level, but they were doing it anyways. And so when we learned how to do a recycle, it was a centerfold behind the end, box counter rotate and, and roll, <laughs> essentially is what we were doing, and so. Um, so we we learned how to do it the way that it was kind of originally written um, by Lee, and and it, it was explained to us in that way because we were told that it was it would probably show up to us in a mystery somewhere. Oh, I thought it was I thought it was single hinge box counter rotate a quarter and the, the trailers roll. A lot of callers will teach it as as hinge and split, <laughs> but <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, no, the, the original one was hinge and fold. I, no, think, I, I, I don't I, think he said. I don't think he'd written counter rotate yet. So I think it's a single file promenade quarter. Well, no, it was it wasn't it was an all eight recycle, right? So it was a it was a centerfold behind the end, hmm. all eight counter rotate around the square, and then and then roll. Yeah, well, you're, um, going, you're going way and then, and then he's then he put it into split boxes. Um, so yeah, it it uh, it was it was kind of a fun. Uh, Actually, extension. When he, when he I don't I don't think I don't think the word counter rotate had been invented yet. I don't think he. I don't think he had that one yet when he put in the yeah. uh when lee wrote recycle he started with all eight recycle yeah and eventually, i realized that yeah. <laughs> but you know the basic all, thing, all i look at is, is if base. you try and explain recycle with gender and say okay from this position you do this from this position you do this you've got 64 explanations to give as opposed to if you teach recycle with ends and centers you've got one explanation to give and it covers all the waves so that's that's the way i think about it it's easier to explain one thing correctly once than 64 times for every every position on the, on that wave. I thought it was the guys do their part of a wheel and deal and <laughs> with their free hand reach over to the far hand of the lady and whip her around. And what, what if the guy's in the center? <laughs> oh, That's why I don't like recycle when I'm in the middle. <laughs> you get whipped around. <laughs> If I'm in the middle, if I'm in the middle doing a recycle, and uh, I'll just I'll just pause and then back up to the spot that I'm supposed to be in. That's that's why I love to hand clap on a recycle because suddenly you take that hand away from them. Oh my God, what do I do now? And you'd be surprised how many you 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 pull your hands in if you're in the center. You pull up, pull that in. How many people stop because they don't know what to do? 
because it's not the guy reach around. A lot of the times the girl flip around, grab the boy and drag him over now. <sighs> so I have counter rotate is 73 by Lee Cotman and recycle is 74 by Lee Cotman. Okay. I was getting that language out of my possibly faulty recollection of Lee's, uh, Lee's own definition book, but. Yep. One other thing on the topic of asymmetrics. Um, as we think about all the different dance programs or levels, and we talked a lot about maybe it's not super appropriate or interesting or whatever for mainstream and maybe plus and advanced is how does it apply all the way up through C4? And the stuff we talked about today, I think the sweet spot is plus and advanced. Um, we do have asymmetrics at challenge um, and even at C4. Um, and I think most people think of um, perhaps Vic Cedar as the master of asymmetrics at C4 and C3. Um, Who is that? I'm sorry. My mind Vic Cedar. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. And <laughs> Ooh, that, that guy. <laughs> also, um, John Bowman um, was really fascinated with asymmetrics and wrote a bunch and did some calling in California of them. Um, so you'll hear his name occasionally. Um, but in terms of a caller who travels around, puts out tapes, and is well respected, I think Vic, in my mind, is the master of that. And what's intriguing with his choreography is he often gets into very unusual formations, or he has you do calls that everyone knows how to do, but has never done the call from this particular formation before. And executing something for the first time by rules that you've learned very well, but never done from here before is a good experience for those who don't break down. And then the second thing that he's good at that the dancers appreciate is making it symmetric again in a way that you didn't notice that he did it to you. And I think that holds true even at plus, that's where my, you know, those facing star to right and left through or those facing start load the boat or past the ocean comes in. But he has many more ways of doing that at C3 and C4. That's, yeah. that's what um, Hal was trying to say is sneak them back into normal, if at all possible, um, without yeah. them knowing they're there and surprise them. I, I have a, if you were following his basic stuff, Hal's basic things, I have a question. As I recall, once he was done dancing the four boys together, four girls together, and wanted to get them normal again, he would get, say, the girls in a left hand wave and the boys in a right, or vice versa. He did that as something to do when getting out. Correct. Uh, normal. What would happen? if he danced a little that way. I'm just curious what happens if you call swing through and the boys uh, I think, uh, uh, and the girls do centers. And no, end. I think that would be okay because he allows you to call different calls to the boys and girls. So you could say, you know, boys swing through, girls spin the top, boys, you know, switch to a diamond, girls hinge, boys diamond circulate, girls follow your neighbor and spread. You know, I think that's just fine. That's so in fact, that's kind of, I didn't ask him because I thought I'd said enough already, but um, I think it would be okay to use slide through um, once you have the boys together and girls together, not just as a way out, but also as a way to put them in a, a right and left-handed formation and then do more calling. Yeah, I th I, th I only came in on that late, but I, th I think 
what he was looking at is that's a much better option than saying, uh, okay, if you're facing out, do this. Okay, those that can do that. Okay, the one the one dancer where you're actually directing individual dancers in a square to do something, as opposed to you know near way, far wave is fine. Boys do this, girls do that is fine. That way everybody's doing the near wave swing through other, you know, far wave trade the wave that kind of stuff. That's that that's what I think he, I thought he was getting at. I'm thinking about um, the calls that you're saying the same thing, but they're doing something different, um, like swing through one is yeah. centers and the other is centers then with ends. Um, right. Or to the yeah. slide through. And I'm going to have to push my dolls because I'm curious. The thing I think you can't do the slide through. You follow, can't. The slide through followed by a walk and dodge, Clark, would be a similar kind of a thing. Yep. The thing you can't do is have man number one start a swing through or ripple the wave or something yeah. like yeah. all the calls we're doing when we're doing boys do this and girls do that. There's still a symmetry to the group of boys and whatever one end boy is doing, the other end boy is doing whatever one center boy is doing, the other center boy is doing. Right. And I don't believe we can break that. Or when we get back together, we'll be in one of his 32 well, with, bad states. With the um, with the swing through, the, the asymmetrics I've done, and granted, I usually do that facing line star through outside couple California, or couple face in the lead California twirl dive, you know, that kind of a fix. But uh, I often use boys on one side, girls on the other, ones in the left, ones in the right. Who starts swing through centers, you know, those kinds of things. Centers run, you know, cast, whatever that you have to do those setups of the flows. And it's never really been a problem. I'm also looking forward to pushing the dolls and seeing whether it matters whether X's are canceled before going back or not. Mm -hmm. That's got that's, that, that's a whole new chapter to your book, don't? No, that's a new chapter to his book, or uh, uh, could be to yours in mental image calling too. Yeah. Mental image for asymmetrics. Well, you know, I've <laughs> I, I've gotten into this with some people, but let, let me just briefly say it because this um, I realized at one point a few years ago, you know, there are six possible arrangements of dancers without we're not talking non-symmetric mm -hmm. asymmetric um and i realized it was really three pairs either all normal and all half sashayed as one pair one group either all boys and all girls or all girls and all boys as another group and one couple sashayed and the other not as the third group and I realized that for many, many years, I had only been doing the mental image with the first group, either all normal mm -hmm. or all half sashayed. And I finally figured out how to do the third group, one couple half sashayed and the other not, and found several ways to get into that, several ways to get out of that, and how to dance while you're in that state. As, as Hal said, not using gender specific calls he was a little more specific than I liked some of his explanations on that. Um, and then how to get in and out of that state. Um, so I've been working a similar kind of thing, but not going quite as asymmetric, but asymmetric compared to the one third choreography possible with the mental image that I was doing. So I, it was a nice extension of that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to going back and actually watching the whole presentation, playing with it as we go. As, uh, and we've had a couple of presentations on asymmetric choreography, but it's generally getting out of a mess as opposed to intentionally using a mess. The so, question I wish we had had time to ask him in your introduction, you said that he enjoys English country dancing, yes. which never really floated your boat. Correct. And I've only dabbled in it, but I've enjoyed the bits that I've done. And I'd be interested to have him hear him say more about his experience there, et cetera. If you go to his website, you'll see him in costume doing some of the, you know, he has some of the stuff. He's pretty active in that branch of the activity too. Um, I've 
not enjoyed when I tried dancing it not enjoyed it because it, it requires footwork and I'm not big on footwork but I yeah. really enjoyed the music and we had we had an English country dance band at our wedding if you remember Clark I don't you probably don't even remember I don't but um we had their necessities their necessities yeah um playing with the former um peter barnes no relation to hal barnes i think hmm. um yeah i really like their music but just not their dance not not having to dance to it but yeah you go to his website and he's got quite a bit on on, on both sides of the activity and uh, he's been calling for a long time yep thinking about this stuff for a long time I think yeah i thought of him as a dc caller i didn't realize he was in colorado both before and after um and i think some time in the chicago area and some of the i mean he gave me a lot of information on introductions that i didn't think was totally relevant i thought he might fill in some of the blanks but, um, yeah apparently he spent 20 years in dc and did a lot of calling in that area. Yeah, I, that's that's where i'm that's where i know him from <laughs> Uh, okay, folks, I got to go. Sounds like a good idea. See you later. Yep. I should go get lunch. I've got to I got to prepare and see what I'm going to do to the folks in the DBD hall at Nationals. <laughs> Are you uh, calling, Brian? You had given it up for a while. I I am retired, but uh I'm on the program at the Nationals. So Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how things go. Retirement I, just I, means I, you work twice as hard for less money, Brian. Well, my, my kids are older now and they, they don't need as much of my attention. So uh, uh, I may I may do a little more calling now these days, but uh, of course, it. we know it's fun. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't get too old to do it. You get old because you stop doing it. Exactly. And yeah. he's going to stop right now because he wants to eat lunch. See you. <laughs> exactly. See you later. I'm going to be till I got some preps to do for the session this after or this morning, I should say this afternoon. God, it feels like afternoon. So you guys take care and I'll see some of you later. Nice seeing you here. Well, no. Yes. How much later from now? Uh, well, it's uh, what? 342. So, and we start at nine. So uh, four, three, five, five hours. <laughs> five hours. Yeah. About five hours. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay. it's it's four o'clock. All well, it's quarter to four our time, and we start at nine. So five five hours. five hours. Yes. <laughs> it okay. just took me. It it took me that long to get there. That's all. Yeah. I still not. Uh, but okay. I, 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 I was trying to convert your time into mine. I said, well, five hours. Yeah, five yeah. hours. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, see you. you. See you Bye. later. Yeah, I'm gonna go as well. Bye. I, I'm I'm done, but I'm just waiting till the last time to go away because I'm running. Oh, is it just us? Was that it? Yeah, see you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> <Let it> go. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.